until the bright days of justice emerges. Free at last! Thank God Almighty! We are free at last! Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. shared these words during a sermon at the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. It was March 31st, 1968, just four days before his assassination. Somewhere we must come to see that human progress never rolls in on the wheels of inevitability. It comes through the tireless efforts and the persistent work of dedicated individuals who are willing to be co-workers with God. And without this hard work, Time itself becomes an ally of the primitive forces of social stagnation. So we must help time and realize that the time is always right to do right. We recognize and honor the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Until the bright days of justice emerges. Free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Until the bright days of justice emerges. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. shared powerful sentiments to his fellow clergymen in Letter from a Birmingham Jail. It was written in April of 1963. Abused and scorned though we may be, our destiny is tied up with America's destiny. Before the pilgrims landed at Plymouth, we were here. For more than two centuries, our forebears labored in this country without wages. They made cotton king. They built the homes of their masters while suffering gross injustice and shameful humiliation. And yet out of bottomless vitality, they continued to thrive and develop. If the inexpressible cruelties of slavery could not stop us, the opposition we now face will surely fail. We will win our freedom because of the sacred heritage of our nation and the eternal will of God are embodied in our echoing demands. We recognize and honor the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Until the bright days of justice emerges. Free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Until the bright days of justice emerges. Free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free. Dr. Martin Luther King shared these transformational words back in August of 1967 during an SALC conference here in Atlanta, Georgia. I say to you today that I still stand by nonviolence, and I am still convinced that it is the most potent weapon available to the Negro in his struggle for justice in this country. And the other thing is that I am concerned about a better world. I am concerned about justice. I'm concerned about brotherhood. I am concerned about truth. And when one is concerned about these things, he can never advocate for violence. Darkness cannot put out darkness. Only light can do that. We recognize and honor the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Until the bright days of justice emerges. Free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Until the bright days of justice emerges. Free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Dr. Martin Luther King shared these words during his I Have a Dream speech in August of 1963. When the architects of our republic wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence, they were signing a promissory note to which every American was to fall heir. This note was a promise that all men would be guaranteed the inalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It is obvious today that America has defaulted on this promissory note insofar as her citizens of color are concerned. Instead of honoring this sacred obligation, America has given the Negro people a bad check, which has come back marked insufficient funds. But we refuse to believe that the bank of justice is bankrupt. We refuse to believe that there are insufficient funds in the great vaults of opportunity of this nation. So we have come to cash this check, a check that will give us upon demand the riches of freedom and the security of justice. 
We have also come to this hollow spot to remind America of the fierce urgency of now. We recognize and honor the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Until the bright days of justice emerges, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Until the bright days of justice emerges, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. shared these words at the conclusion of the Selma to Montgomery protest marches. It was March of 1965. Yes, we are on the move and no wave of racism can stop us. We are on the move now. The burning of our churches will not deter us. The bombing of our homes will not dissuade us. We are on the move now. The beating and killing of our clergymen and young people will not divert us. We are on the move now. The wanton release of their known murderers would not discourage us. We are on the move now. Like an idea whose time has come, not even the marching of mighty armies can halt us. We are moving to the land of freedom. We recognize and honor the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Until the bright days of justice emerges, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Until the bright days of justice emerges, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. shared these words during his Nobel Peace Prize acceptance speech in Oslo, Norway, back in 1964. I asked why is this prize awarded to a movement which is beleaguered and committed to an unrelenting struggle, to a movement which has not won the very peace and brotherhood which is the essence of the Nobel Prize. After contemplation, I concluded that this award, which I receive on behalf of the movement, is a profound recognition that nonviolence is the answer to the critical, political, and moral question of our time, the need for man to overcome oppression and violence without resulting to violence and oppression. We recognize and honor the life and legacy of former District 3 resident, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Until the bright days of justice emerges, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Until the bright days of justice emerges, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Dr. Martin Luther King delivered these words during his Beyond Vietnam speech in New York City back in April of 1967. We still have a choice today, nonviolent coexistence or violent co-annihilation. We must move past indecision to action. We must find new ways to speak for peace in Vietnam and justice throughout the developing world, a world that borders on our doors. If we do not act, we shall surely be dragged down the long, dark, and shameful corridors of time reserved for those who possess power without compassion, might without morality, and strength without sight. Now let us begin. Now let us rededicate ourselves to the long and bitter but beautiful struggle for a new world. This is the calling of the sons of God, and our brothers wait eagerly for our response. We recognize and honor the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Until the bright days of justice emerges, Free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Until the bright days of justice emerges. Free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Dr. Martin Luther King delivered these words during his I've Been to the Mountaintop sermon in Memphis, Tennessee, back in April of 1968. It was his final speech. We don't have to argue with anybody. We don't have to curse and go around acting bad with our words. We don't need any bricks and bottles. We don't need any Molotov cocktails. We just need to go around to these stores and to these massive industries in our country and say, God sent us by here to say to you that you're not treating his children right. And we've come by here to ask you to make the first item on your agenda fair treatment where God's children are concerned. Now, if you're not prepared to do that, 
We do have an agenda that we must follow, and our agenda calls for withdrawing economic support from you. We recognize and honor the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Until the bright days of justice emerge. Free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Until the bright days of justice emerge. Free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. penned these words in 1967 in his last series of essays entitled, Where Do We Go From Here? Chaos or Community? It would be his final book. Power at its best is love implementing the demands of justice. And justice at its best is love correcting everything that stands against love. We recognize and honor the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Until the bright days of justice emerge. Free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Until the bright days of justice emerge. Free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Dr. Martin Luther King shared these powerful words during his Give Us the Ballot address at the Prayer Pilgrimage for Freedom in May of 1957. Give us the ballot and we will no longer have to worry the federal government about our basic rights. Give us the ballot and we will no longer plead to the federal government for passage of an anti-lynching law. We will, by the power of our vote, write the law on the statute books of the South and bring an end to the dastardly acts of the hooded perpetrators of violence. Give us the ballot and we will transform the salient misdeeds of bloodthirsty mobs into the calculated good deeds of orderly citizens. We recognize and honor the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Until the bright days of justice emerge. Free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Until the bright... Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Doug Shipman. I'm the Atlanta City Council President, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to this uh, meeting of the Atlanta City Council President, January 18th, 2022. Uh, of course, we're meeting today because of the King holiday yesterday. Mr. Clark, I'd like to ask you to call the roll. Council President Doug Shipman. Present. Council Members Post 1 at large, Michael Julian Bond. Here. Post 2 at large, Matt Westmoreland. Here. Post 3 at large, Keisha Sean Waite. Present. Council District 1, Jason H. Winston. Present. Council District 2, Amir Faroki. Here. Council District 3, Byron D. Amos. Council District 4, Jason Dozier. Here. Council District 5, Liliana Bakahari. Council District 6, Alex Juan. Council District 7, Howard Shook. Aye. Council District 8, Mary Norwood. Here. Council District 9, Dustin Hillis. Here. Council District 10, Andrea L. Boone. Present. Council District 11, Marcy Collier Overstreet. Present. Council District 12, Antonio Lewis. Present. Quorum present. Just to make sure, has anyone else joined? Mr. President, this is Council Member Byron Amos. Duly noted. Thank you all. 
seeing that we have a, a quorum, uh, I would like to move to the adoption of the agenda. Do I have a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Um, uh, <laughs> is that Mr. Bond who moved the, the adoption? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Bond moved the adoption. Do I have a second? Second. Norwood. Seconded by Council Member Norwood. Have, uh, with a unanimous consent without objection, we will adopt the agenda. Is any objection? Seeing no objection, the agenda is adopted. Mr. Clark, please uh, announce the count. Unanimous consent is 14 yeas, zero nays. Thank you very much. That's good. That's good. Thank you. Ms. Bakhtiari, are you on? I believe you are on. Yes, I'm on. And I will be. I'm on. Thank you. Uh, now we'll move to the invocation. Uh, it is my pleasure to welcome today um, to uh, provide the invocation the Reverend Dr. Dwight Andrews a friend to many in this community through his work at First Congregational Church as well as his work as an accomplished musician and composer. Uh, Dr. Reverend Andrews, are you with us? I am with you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you for joining so much. Thank you. I, I welcome this opportunity to be with all of you, so many dear friends, and uh, in this important season, I'm grateful for the opportunity to give the invocation. Let us pray. Most merciful and always loving God, we begin this prayer by thanking you for this very day when the Atlanta City Council convenes to do the work of this great city. As we begin this new year and recall anew the life and legacy of your son, and Atlanta's native son, Dr. Martin Luther King, we are both inspired and challenged by the powerful example of Dr. King and so many other Atlanta sons and daughters. As we begin this new season, this new chapter, we pray we never forget the struggles and sacrifices and victories of our forebearers, for they have taught us that progress is never permanent and that freedom is never free. In this fierce urgency of now, when so much of the progress we cherish seems threatened at every turn, you have convened this group of servant leaders at perhaps the most difficult time in our lives. We are in the midst of so many crises, Lord, the pandemic, the economic crisis, and the crisis of our lack of basic trust in our institutions and one another. God, we invoke your divine presence as we consider the daunting work we have set before the city and the city council. We are grateful that Atlanta is a community of communities. It is a city strong because of its diversity. We pray that our differences not divide us, but strengthen and enrich us. We pray for our citizens who play a vital role in the success of this city. May we citizens understand the key role we play in our collective success, where our diverse gifts and differences can be a source of strength and not distraction. Remind us, perfect creator, that all human institutions are imperfect, yet you have empowered us with the capacity to do good, moral work for all. Lord, we ask that in our efforts that you might Allow us to not let our pragmatism overshadow our principles. May our zeal for results be tempered with patience and discipline of discernment. With the servant leadership of this city council, may Atlanta continue to be a place where dreams and visions can become realities, where now is the right time to do right. Empower and encourage these leaders as they bring their unique gifts and talents to the task of making policy for this great city on a hill. May their energy, creativity, discipline, and productivity be limited only by their inspiration and guidance from you. And may Atlanta continue to shine bright 
as a beacon of hope for its citizens and the world. May it shine a light on the path toward justice for all, freedom for all, bread for all, and peace for all. All of these blessings we ask in your name. Amen. Thank you so much, Reverend Andrews, for joining us today. And I know I speak on behalf of council, which we look forward to seeing you soon uh, across the community. Thank you. Thank you so much, and God bless you all. Um, members, would you please join me now in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mr. Clark, do we have any proclamations, commendations, and other special awards today? None that I'm aware of. Hearing none, we will move to remarks by the public. Mr. Clark, can you play the remarks, please? The public may leave a comment of their concerns the day before the scheduled meeting between the hours of 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. by dialing 404 330-6001. Public comments for the full council agenda shall not exceed two minutes. In addition, BDHS will enter the committee whole and the public may express their individual concerns for the committee by dialing 404-330-6089. We have 17 public comments, 17 minutes worth of public comments. Mr. Massenberg, Mr. Clerk, Mr. Mr. Bond, I, I apologize. I, I was distracted. But before we get into public comment, I did want to mention uh, the passing of Elder Cal, who was the happy preacher. We had the opportunity a few years ago to honor him in the council chamber for all of his good works. Uh, he, as we, many of you may know, he passed uh, just a few days ago and just wanted to uplift his name and his absence as his presence uh, was not felt during this annual King service at his uh, native Ebenezer Baptist Church this past year. So Elder Morrell, I you know, just wanted to note that he is sorely missed and he developed that moniker of happy preacher during the king service from a visit from vice president al gore who was who had come to make a speech and as elder morrell would chime in during those key points during the speech uh it was al gore who actually gave him that nickname as the happy preacher and so he will sorely be missed and just wanted to publicly extend you know condolences to his family and those who loved and cared about him. thank you mr Bonser. mr president yes Is that mr shook howard shook here yeah shook here well, i want to echo mr bond's statement uh you know the happy preacher was iconic to the point where where his voice was sorely missed um and had a lot of us wondering at our swearing in and i wonder if it's if our uh, oath taking is even legal uh, without him being present um and and then the, I, I, of course we also need to uh officially mourn the exquisitely sad uh, passing of Jeff Parker. Thank you. Let me take a moment. Any any others uh, to offer a comment here? Well, just to piggyback on Mr. Shook, Jeff was a personal friend of mine. Uh, not only was he a dynamic public servant, uh, he was a, a brilliant person in his chosen field of endeavor and you know, just a, a, a phenomenal guy. He was a, he was a great guy, and, and uh, to the Marta family and to his family, you know, we want, want to also extend uh, condolences. I would like to just offer.
offer that we take a moment of silence to recognize the passing of both of these individuals. Would you join me in a moment of silence? Thank you very much. With that, Mr. Clark, um, let us return to uh, remarks from the public. Mr. President, it's been brought to my attention. We've been joined by council member one, but we currently have 15 members present. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Mr. Mathenberg, please proceed. Hi, my name is Nancy Haybest, um, city of Atlanta. My comment is that I would like to engage our communities in the fullest extent through Parks and Rec Department and through Atlanta Public Schools from K through 12 and everybody else, um, all residents of all ages. There is a game called Pickleball and we would like to spread the joy of Pickleball in and around all of our parks and tennis courts and tennis centers and we as a community can help with that mission. So we are just making a plea to Parks and Rec specifically, um, as well as Atlanta Public School, to help us use our tennis courts to the fullest extent and bring joy and engagement to our community. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. I am, that I am, Brother Anthony Muhammad. I command spiritual energy to teach my soul consciousness every day. I recognize city council that our people who live today in the physical need a transformation from what has been taught to them religiously. So to say we have to get back to the ancient, kinetic, aboriginal culture of our ancestors, dog people simply because we are not one not one with one another Mr. Dickerson, i love you brother i love your will but let's be clear we cannot vote and i will not vote until you be accountable to what you say you can do to raise up the condition of dog people in city of Atlanta. as i listened to you yesterday we didn't hear enough about affordable houses. There are people living on the street all over this country. Atlanta should not be like that. City Council members, you young people, I'm saying it to you. You young people, Mr. Howard, there are articulate and tell you about his organization, Payne Ivy, works to elevate the consciousness of the women's and children and seniors. Therefore, I ask you to lift find resources and deal affordable houses today is the will of the creator Ms. Bernice King we have to have reparation and just the freedom and quality for the dog people here in North America and especially in Atlanta Atlanta, Georgia or oh, uh, Mata Mesa Hotel Assalamu alaikum brother Anthony Mohammed. Hi, well, my name is Geraldine Toll I live on Lennox Road in Atlanta I am calling a person to uh, make a ball. I have been playing at uh, the Piedmont Park, a musical center or something, tennis center, and we have been um, bringing our own tape and taping the courts and things of that nature in order to play. I was um, requesting that we get some permanent tennis, um, sorry, pickleball courts throughout um, Atlanta. Um, we have a very large group that we're usually over 30 people both on Friday evenings and Saturday mornings, and it's such a fast-growing sport. I'd love to be able to see this continue and grow our community uh, in the pickleball Atlanta community. Thanks very much. My number is 770-757-1203. Thank you very much, and I appreciate your time. Hey there. Uh, my name is Chris Rich, and I have been a taxpayer and homeowner in Midtown Atlanta since 1997, I think. Um, and have never called to make an ask uh, for anything, but I feel pretty strongly about this. Um, we have an opportunity in Atlanta to really do something exciting with pickleball, which you may know is the number one fastest growing sport in the country. I started playing under a year ago, as did a lot of my friends, and we're all excited about it, but there's no place really to 
to Avondale to play. We play multiple days a week, and I'm paying money to play at Piedmont uh, Hospital. So I understand there's some resurfacing going on uh, up soon at the tennis center, and we would like dedicated lined pickleball courts. Um, feel free to call me if you have questions, and thank you for the consideration. Hi, this is Beth Cooper, and I am a City of Atlanta resident. Uh, I am calling uh, in regards to uh, advocating for some attention dispensed by the City Council and the Mayor's Office uh, and the Parks and Recreation Department on setting up some dedicated pickleball facilities throughout the City of Atlanta. Um, I understand that the City uh, has a lot of issues on its plate right now. Um, but I am a Buckhead resident, uh, and I would like to see this attention be given. Uh, we are all taxpayers, and these tennis courts, as we drive around and, and see uh, no one playing on these tennis courts, whereas uh, there are hundreds of people who are dying to play pickleball uh, inside the city of Atlanta, and we have no facilities, and it doesn't appear that we have many advocates at the city council, uh, I mean, the Parks and Recreation Department. Um, I would like to see that change. I think that there is a group of residents who would like to uh, assemble uh, and offer support to city council and the mayor's office and the Parks and Recreation Department in order to see this happen. I believe there are outside investment dollars and corporate sponsors who we can also bring to bear. Uh, to uh, shore up these costs, um, to take existing tennis courts and strike them for dedicated pickleball costs nothing except paint. Uh, so I would please uh, request that you give some attention to this. Again, I offer myself as a, a person who will participate at a, uh, a senior level. I would love to participate and rally a group of uh, people to get involved and help the city bring this to bear. This is a nationwide thing that is happening, and Atlanta is so far on the bus behind. My name is Timothy Ball. I'd like to have Commissioner John Dargle of Parks and Recreation address the needs of the pickleball community in Atlanta. We sorely need a pickleball point person in the Department of Parks and Recs so we can resolve open issues about bringing this sport to Atlanta. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ann Clark, and I want to comment on the uh, resurfacing project at Piedmont Park Tennis Course. I believe they're called Sharon Lester Tennis Center. Um, we play pickleball. I teach pickleball as well. Um, and pickleball is the fastest growing sport and the city of Atlanta should be able to have lined pickleball courts at Piedmont Park, at least a couple pickleball courts. There are 30, 40 plus people playing just on a Friday night pickleball at Piedmont Park and we're having to tape the lines. So it'd be great if in that resurfacing project a few of the courts, just like you're doing the junior tennis lines on a tennis court, you could also do the um, pickleball lines on a tennis court. This would be great for the community, for thousands and thousands of people. Um, I know in DeKalb County, they did this last year to the DeKalb Tennis Center, which has 17 um, tennis courts and now 10 lined pickleball courts. So Piedmont Park with 12 tennis courts should be able to do at least four lined, three or four lined pickleball courts to serve the community. This would be great. Thank you. Ann Clark is my name. Hi, my name is David Epstein. Um, I'm calling in regards to pickleball in the city of Atlanta, um, something that is desperately uh, needed. Uh, we've been having to make all kinds of do for our own stuff and chalk lines all over the city of Atlanta. And we are hoping Piedmont Park can get some permanent lines um, in that gem of a park. And we're also hoping we can get some dedicated pickleball courts away from a tennis center. Uh, most cities around Atlanta have um, pickleball centers all over where they have anywhere from 12 to, 
you know, 24 courts dedicated just for pickleball. And um, it, um, I've been going to Griffin. I've been going all over the place where they have um, these nice courts. And the city of Land is way behind. So we're hoping we can do that. Thanks. Hey, this is Brett Gosnell. I was calling to, I hope y'all would consider either building some pickleball courts or uh, just adding some lines to the currently existing tennis courts that we have. Um, I think there's plenty of players around town and uh, sports needs to be growing, so I hope y'all would consider that. Thank you. Greetings, Kelsey Memphis and Steph. Especially thanks to your citizens and voters of Atlanta monitoring our government in action. Then our work to reach advocate public policy analysts. I've come to speak about communication 22-3-5014 for appointing Mr. Jack Fiberry to serve as a member of the Zoning Review Board. Thank you, Mr. Fiberry, for your publication confronting suburban deterioration. Every now and then, there comes a zoning matter that deserves close scrutiny and questioning. If it is claimed that the neighborhood planning unit has endorsed the actions surrounding that zoning matter, the documentation exists showing that the membership actually voted to endorse if it is claimed that a certain person has been designated to represent the neighborhood planning unit in the matter, is there documentation on file showing that the membership actually voted for that person to represent them? Such a matter is B-21-315, take a peek. The document you have acquired from time that at Texas A&M can be of invaluable assistance to transparency, accuracy, and validity here. Welcome aboard. This is Barbara Elliott, a city of Atlanta resident, and I am calling about pickleball courts for the Sharon Lester Tennis Center at Piedmont Park. We really need to have permanent lines for pickleball on courts 10, 11, and 12. And a tennis court, you can make two pickleball courts per court. And there should be an equitable fee structure set in place for pickleball, which would not be the same as tennis. Thanks. Hello, my name is Terry Ozell. My request is that the city of Atlanta provide permanent lines for pickleball at the Sharon Lester Tennis Center at Piedmont Park. On three courts, lot, uh, courts 10, 11, and 12, which would make two pickleballs per tennis court, would be great and we need permanent lines. The second request is that the city figure out an equitable fee structure to charge for pickleball. Thank you all for listening. My phone number is 678-427-0448. Thank you. Hi, my name is Allison Gosnell. I am calling to request Commissioner Dargle appoint a pickleball point person for parks and recreation. Also, um, that we would uh, we would ask for permanent pickleball court lined at Piedmont Park um, on 10, 11, and 12, two pickleball courts per court as well as an equitable fee structure set in place for pickleball. And pickleball is the fastest growing sport in America. Um, we would also please request consideration for dedicated pickleball courts inside the city of Atlanta that are you know, dedicated only specifically for pickleball. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, City Council, and also the mayor. We have a crisis. 
pursuant to section 2-1142 of the Atlanta City Code of Ordinances. 22-C-5009, a communication from Municipal Clerk Forrest Smith the third, the mini report of the administrative correction made previously adopted legislation between the regular council meeting dates of January 3rd, 2022 and January 18th, 2022 to the Atlanta City Council in accordance with section 2-169 of the Atlanta City Code of Ordinances regarding 20-0-1352. Staff recommendation to accept and file all seven. So we're taking all seven of these as a group. Uh, do I have a motion to accept and file? So move. Mr. Bond is moved. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Norwood. Uh, we will take these as an approved through a unanimous consent to accept and file without objections. Are there any objections? Hearing none, uh, these are adopted to accept and file. Mr. Clark, please read the total. Unanimous consent is 15 yeas, zero nays. 15 yeas, zero nays. Mr. Clark, please proceed. Mr. President, if I can file item eight and nine in the block. Proceed. 22-C-5010, a communication from Daniel Hampton, Chair Audit Committee, submitting the performance audit report, buildings and zoning enforcement. 22-C-5011, a communication from Debbie Skopinski, President of Atlanta Planning Advisory Board, submitting the appointment of Ms. Corinne Dent to serve as a member of the Atlanta Beltline Tax Allocation District Advisory Committee. This appointment is for a term of two years. Staff recommendation to refer to Community Development Human Services Committee and Committee on Council. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. We're taking uh, 5108 and 511, I'm sorry, 510 and 511 as a group. Do I have a motion to uh, accept and refer as uh, outlined by the staff? So moved. So moved by Mr. Bond. Do I have a second? Second, Norwood. Second by Councilmember Norwood. Uh, there's no objection. We'll approve these uh, recommendations to refer by unanimous consent. Do I hear any objections? Without objections, these are uh, adopted for referral. Mr. Clerk, would you please read the count? Madam consent of members present, 15 yeas, zero nays. 15 yeas, zero nays. Mr. Clerk, please proceed. Mr. President, if I could file my 10 and 11 at the block as well. Proceed. 22-C-5012, a communication from Debbie Skopinski, President of Atlanta Planning Advisory Board, submitting the appointment of Ms. Patna C. Paris to serve as a member of the Public Safety Commission. 22-C-5013, a communication from Debbie Skopinski, President of Atlanta Planning Advisory Board, submitting the appointment of Ms. Dorothy Hurst to serve as a member of the Public Safety Commission. Staff recommendation to refer to Public Safety and Legal, Legal Administration Committee and Committee on Council. So 512 and 513 have been offered as a group to refer per staff recommendations. Do I have a motion? So moved. Mr. Bond is moved. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Councilmember Winston. Without objection, we'll adopt these two uh, through unanimous consent. Do I hear any objections? Without objection, these are referred as staff recommended. Mr. Clerk, please read the count. Unanimous consent of members present is 15 eight zero nays. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Please proceed. Final item is 22-C-5014, a communication from Council Member Liliana Bakhtahari, District 5, Alex Wine, District 6, and Matt Westmoreland, Post 2 at large, appointing Mr. Jack Fiber to serve as a member of the Zoning Review Board. This appointment is for a term of two years. Staff recommendation to refer to Zoning Committee and Committee on Council. Do 
you have a motion uh, regarding uh, communication 514 to uh, refer to zoning and committee on council. Motion for uh, Wan. Thank you. A motion by Mr. Wan. Do I have a second? Second, Bakhtiari. Second by Councilmember Bakhtiari. I uh, will uh, adopt this through unanimous consent without objection. Are there any objections? Hearing none, we refer this to zoning and committee on council. As staff recommended, Mr. Clerk, please read the counts. Unanimous consent is 15 yeas, zero nays. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Any other communications? None, Mr. President. Thank you. We'll now proceed to consideration of any vetoed legislation. Is there any for consideration today, Mr. Clerk? None to report, Mr. President. Thank you. We'll now proceed to any unfinished business. Mr. Clerk, is there any unfinished business for consideration? No unfinished business to report. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. We'll now move to the consent agenda, section one. Uh, are there any items to be removed from the consent agenda by any of the members? Hillis. Mr. Hillis. Need to remove item 122 0 1002. Uh, it was erroneously placed on the consent agenda, although it had an abstention, so we'll consider that instead in the Public Safety Legal Administration Committee report. So that is 2201002. You want to move that to the Public Safety Committee report. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Any Anything else? Hearing none, then I would uh, ask for a motion to accept section one of the consent agenda excluding 2201002 as offered by Mr. Hillis. Do I have a motion? So moved, Hillis. Moved by Mr. Hillis. Is there a second? Second. Second. Seconded by Council Member Bond. Uh, through a unanimous consent without objection, we will adopt the consent agenda section one excluding 2201002. Are there any objections? Hearing no, no objections, section one of consent agenda is adopted. Mr. Clerk, please read the count. Antonio Lewis, sorry, I, I, I was talking to you. Mr. I Lewis? To call, yes, I wanted to call into a question the, uh, on the consent agenda 22R3001. On the task force? 22R3001. Yep, I wanted to offer a motion to call it for discussion. You'd like, you'd like to take it off the consent agenda? Yes. Okay, I am going to rule that uh, there was an objection to the adoption of the consent agenda, so I will reopen the consent agenda. And you are asking uh, for 22R3001 to be removed. Is that correct, Mr. Lewis? I want to, yes, I want to uh, call the motion for discussion. Yes, to remove it. Okay, so I, that will happen under committee then by removing it from the consent agenda, it will be considered there. Okay. So now I would ask for a motion to adopt section one consent agenda, excluding the two, uh, uh, papers that have been highlighted 2201002 as well as 22R3001. They will be excluded from the consent agenda. Do I have a motion to adopt the consent agenda excluding those two items? Antonio Lewis. Mr. Lewis has moved. Do I have a second? Second. Mr. Bond is seconded. We're going to move this through unanimous consent without objection. Are there any objections to adopting section one of the consent agenda with the two exclusions? Hearing none, the consent agenda section one with exclusions is adopted. Mr. Clerk, please announce the count. Mr. 
president, with all due respect, can we take a roll call vote on this particular item since we have so many items on our consent agenda? Sure, I'd be, I'd be happy to take a roll call. We've been moved and seconded, so we're now going to take a roll call vote on adoption of section one of the consent agenda with the two exclusions. Mr. Clerk, please call, please open the vote. Thank you, Mr. President. The vote is now open. Will everyone please vote? Reflecting vote. Councilman Westmoreland, how would you like to have your vote reflected? In favor? Populating vote. 15 yeas, zero nays. 15 yeas, zero nays. The consent agenda section one with the two exclusions is adopted. We'll now move to the consent agenda section two. These are uh, mostly ordinances for first reading. The, these will be motions to refer. Uh, are there any items that members would like excluded from this consent agenda? Without objection, without any notations, we'll let them follow that course. Thank you. So now we'll move to the report of the standing committees. I appreciate all of the committee chairs holding uh, first committee meetings over the course of this week, of course, except for CDHS, which we'll get to in a few minutes. We'll start with the zoning committee chairperson Overstreet. Thank you, President Shipman. Okay, um, to get started on zoning, this is Council Member Overstreet. I guess I should state that. To get started on um, zoning, uh, we first need to turn our agenda to page 21, and we'll start there. And we're going to start with our um, item one, which is 22 dash O dash zero dash one zero zero one and the location is property abutting the intersection of flat shows road and boulder crest road and the ordinance is for second read and the ordinance is to impose a 180 day moratorium on applications for special administrative permit building permit or land disturbance permit and coming out of our committee it was um the action is favorable and so i moved to um i move for for uh I, I make a motion to move this ordinance and i need a second or we don't need a second because it is uh coming out of zoning that is that is correct that is correct okay. chair over street we sent it out of the committee. We don't need a second. So it's been moved. 2201001 has been moved for adoption. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, uh, I would call for a vote on motion 2201001. Mr. Clark, would you call the vote? The vote is open. Will everyone please vote? Reflecting vote. Okay. 
Councilman Bond, how would you like to have your vote reflected? Aye. Councilman Westmoreland, how would you like to have your vote reflected? In favor. The vote is now closed. 15 yeas and zero nays. 15 yeas and zero nays is adopted. Uh, Chair Overstreet, please proceed. Thank you. And uh, President Shipman, do you call for the vote or do I? I've not done the the uh, public zoning as chair. This is my first. So I'm not sure. I want to make sure going forward. Yeah, you offer the motion and um, I'll, I'll manage the discussion and then call for the vote. So just okay. like we did. Okay, thank you. Sounds good. All right, we're going to move on to ordinance for first read and I will take item two through seven as a block. And then I'll take um, items 10 through 13. Um, they can be taken as a block. As such, I'll do items eight and nine separately after we do the block, if that's fine. So um, item two is legislative number 22-0-1051. And it's, uh, Z-21-58, and the location is 1056, 1066, 1088, and 1100 Murphy Avenue, and 1127, and 1135 Sylvan Road. The ordinance is to rezone from I-1, which is light industrial, to I-mix, light industrial mixed use. And the uh, recommendation is to refer it to the RB and Zoning Committee. Item legislative item number three, which is 22-0-1052, uh, zoning case number Z-21-61. Location is 525 Langhorn Street. And it's an ordinance that is to rezone from R5 DL which is two family residential belt line overlay to MR-4A DL, which is multi-family residential belt line overlay. Action is to refer it to the RB and zoning committee. Number four is 22-0-1053. It's case number Z-21-64. Location is 557 West Lake Avenue. And the ordinance is to rezone from MRC1, which is mixed residential commercial, to C1, which is community business district. And the action is to refer it to ZRB and zoning committee. Number five is 22-0-1054. And it's case number Z-21-66. The location is 1101 Church Street. The ordinance to, is to rezone from R4A BL, which is single family residential belt line overlay to MRMU BL, which is multi-family, multi-unit belt line overlay. The action is to refer it to the RB and zoning committee. Number six is 22-0-1055. The case number is Z-21-76. The location is 314, 320, and 324 West Wayuga Road and 361 Valley Brook Drive, rear. The ordinance is to rezone from RLCC, which is Residential Limited Commercial Conditional, and R4, Single Family Residential, to PDH, which is Plan development housing. The action is to refer it to ZRB and zoning committee. Number seven is 22-0, no, 22-0-1056. The case number is Z-21-80. The location is 559, 556, and 569 10th Street and 997 Huron Street. The ordinance is to rezone from R5 
SPI 8, which is 2 Family Residential Home Park Special Public Interest District, to MRC-2 SPI 8, which is Mixed Residential Commercial Home Park Special Public Interest District. And the action is to refer it to the RB and Zoning Committee. So we, that is um, items two through seven. Thank you, uh, Chair Overstreet. Those items will be referred as outlined. Please proceed. Okay, let's go ahead. I'm gonna take the next block. That would be item number 10, which is 22 O-1059, and it's case number Z-21-105. The location is 2590 Watkins Street, and it the ordinance is to rezone from R4A, which is single family residential, to R5, two family residential. And the uh, action is to refer to the RB and zoning committee. Item number 11 is 22-0-1060, and the case number is Z-22-02, and the location is text amendment. And I need clarification about that. The ordinance is to amend chapter 18Q, SPI 1-7, Piedmont Avenue Special Public Interest District of Zoning Code to insert a new chapter 18Q to incorporate revision. And the action is to refer to ZRB and Zoning Committee. I'm gonna move on to uh, number 12. And that legislative number is 22-0-1061. The zoning case number is U-21-11. The location is 1318 Sylvan Road. The ordinance grants a special use permit for outdoor displays of sales areas or sales areas. And the action is to refer to the RB and zoning committee. Uh, the legislative, the next item is uh, 13 and the legislative number is 22-0-1062. The zoning case number is U-21-32, location 484 Atlanta Industrial Way. The ordinance grants a special use permit for recovered materials possessing I mean, processing facility. Uh, the action is to refer to ZRB and zoning committee. And I've Receive the text. Text amendment on uh, item number 11 is just that. It's, it, it's spelled out in the actual ordinance. So um, I would need for these to be referred, um, Mr. President. Thank you, Chair Overstreet. These will be referred uh, for the recommendations. Okay. And so now we'll go back and we'll do the items that we are going to take as a block items eight and nine um and so we'll we'll do those and i think that those are going to be referred just to the zoning committee that's why they're they're in a block uh by themselves so number eight um legislative number 22-0-1057 is case number z-21-82 and the location is 257 Oak Cliff Road. The ordinance is to rezone from R4, which is single family residential, to MR2, which is multi-family residential. And the action is to refer it to the zoning committee. And uh, item number nine, legislative number is 22-0-1058. Zoning case is D-21-93, the location 1411 South Gordon Street, and the ordinance is to rezone from R4, which is single family residential, to NC-15, which is Westview Neighborhood Commercial District, and the action is to refer it to the zoning committee. Thank you, Chair 
share over the street, uh, those will be referred for the recommendations. Okay, and that is our zoning committee report. Thank you very much. We will move to Public Safety and Legal Administration Committee, Chair uh, Member Hillis. Thank you, Mr. President. Our first item is what was removed from the consent agenda. Give me just one second. Um, 2201002, an ordinance by Council Member Montagillian Bond as amended by Public Safety and Legal Administration Committee to temporarily suspend the issuance of violations, citations, and or penalties as prescribed in section 10-109A and 10-109.1 of the Atlanta City Code of Ordinances for the failure to renew a license sell alcoholic beverages by January 1, 2022, <clears throat> but no later than February 28, 2022, for the 22, 2022 license calendar year and for other purposes. And the motion out of committee uh, is to adopt. And as mentioned, uh, there was one abstention, uh, which was myself due to uh, the need for some information. Myself and all council members have received what I requested. Uh, so again, the motion is to adopt. This is coming out of a committee. It does not need a second. Uh, is there any discussion on the matter? Hearing no discussion, we'll move to a vote on 22-0-1002. Mr. Clark, would you call for the vote? The vote is now open. <laughs> Will everyone please vote? Reflecting vote. Councilman Bond, how would you like to have your vote reflected? Aye. Councilman Westmoreland? In favor? Populating votes. Fifteen yeas, zero nays. Fifteen yeas, zero nays. The motion is adopted. Chair Hillis, please proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, second item is also the, the item put off of the consent agenda, 22R3001. Resolution by Council Member Samaria Norwood and Monty Julian Bond as amended by the Public Safety and Legal Administration Committee, establishing a Buckhead Public Safety Task Force to partner with Buckhead businesses and neighborhood associations, law enforcement agencies, and appropriate governmental entities to develop and implement a comprehensive plan to deter crime and enhance public safety in Buckhead's neighborhoods, business districts, and commercial corridors, and for other purposes. Uh, the motion of the committee uh, is to adopt. Coming out of committee, the motion it does not need a second. Uh, is there any discussion on 22R-3001? Yes. Is that Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Lewis, you're recognized. Yes, sir. Uh, so data, I just want to bring up uh, data from the Atlanta Police Department. Neither supports the claim that Buckhead is a hot spot of crime in Atlanta. Northern Buckhead should be an area to focus additional public safety efforts. In fact, Zone 2 Commander Major Andrew Sensor noted in his fall 2021 update, despite media frenzy about crime in Buckhead, Zone 2 continues to remain the safest place to live in the city with just 11% of the city's violent crime occurring. What I think is that we should do this citywide, not just in Buckhead. Buckhead is a part of the lounge a part of the community in Atlanta. So I think this time we should do citywide, not just Buckhead. And Mr. Lewis, um, our city- Council Member Norwood, would you like to be recognized? Yes, I'm sorry, yes. Council Member Norwood, go ahead, proceed. All right, thank you. Um, Council Member Lewis, uh, Council Member Keisha Sean Waite has some information that she would like to share, which I think will address exactly what you're talking about. Councilmember Waits, would you like to discuss this now or wait until the end of the meeting? Okay, am I recognized by the president? 
Council Member Wade, go ahead, you're recognized. Absolutely. I'm working in tandem with Council Member Norwood, uh, to which that we are both in support of the Public Safety Commission, uh, which has been amended, and I will be introducing that at the appropriate time this morning, this afternoon. Uh, it's my belief that that would uh, be a solution to ensure that all residents of the city of Atlanta are recognized and are a part of the conversation. Is there further discussion on 22R3001? Uh, so Council Member Lewis has uh, more discussion on it. Council Member Lewis, you're recognized? I would like to co-sponsor that legislation uh, citywide, but I think that the budget by itself should never pass by itself because we're one city. Um, may, may I be recognized, Mr. Chair? Councilmember okay. Norwood, go ahead. Okay, uh, Councilmember Lewis, uh, Buckhead, I have been head of the Buckhead Council of Neighborhoods, as you know, for three years. We had a discussion a year and a half ago about public safety initiatives in the area and every part of the city is very important and I am so pleased that council member Waite is doing the sponsoring the citywide public safety commission which will be citywide and will work in tandem. This particular resolution I believe will be very helpful for this particular part of the city and so as a district eight councilwoman i would like to do this for my own district and for district seven which is the eastern part of buckhead so this is my request to have a examination of some of the things that have happened some of the initiatives that can be put in place and we'll share that with every member of city council and certainly keep in very close contact with the public safety commission which is citywide and is a two-year commission. This task force is only 90 days. It is, it is not a long involved analysis. It is a very quick um, review and update for this particular part of the city. Um, Mr. Shook, I believe that you wanted to be recognized. Uh, yeah, let me add a little context here. I, I know what Ms. Norwood's trying to do. She's trying to establish a framework for a grassroots conversation among bucket, bucket stakeholders who are dealing with a uh, you know, statistically uh, big increase in crime. As bad as other parts of the city? No. But only from the grassroots are you going to get the kind of commitment it takes for a task force like this to come up with the answers as to how we can uh, work more closely together. Now, if you drag that into a citywide conversation, I will tell you, I've been here a minute, uh, task forces keep minutes but take hours and nothing will ever happen. I will support Anything citywide, I'll support anything that's local grassroots. But let it be known, an attempt to scuttle this is going to be seen in a very negative light uh, by my constituents. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? I, I just know that in 90 days, the state house. Mr. Lewis, would you like, Mr. Lewis, would you like to be recognized? Yes. Mr. Lewis, uh, I, I, can you hear me? Yes, so uh, I know that in 90 days, the state house folks go home, and I know there's a bill that's going to be over there. And so I, I just think if we create this just for budget right here, right now, I think it's the wrong time for it. Wrong message to be sending. And particularly if you look at the people that are on the committee, they want the chief of Atlanta police uh, the Chief Executive Officer of Atlanta Police Foundation. And this is something that we're going to do citywide. Why just one area? Further discussion on 22R3001. Hearing no further discussion.
discussion, we'll move to a vote on resolution 22R3001. Mr. Clark, would you please open the vote? The vote is open. Will everyone please vote? Mr. Clerk, this is Councilor Bakhtiari. The vote opened and then canceled and going to be reopened again. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Will everyone please vote? Reflecting vote. Councilman Bond, how would you like to have your vote reflected? Aye. Councilman Westmoreland? In favor. Councilwoman Boone? Yes. The vote is now closed. 14 yeas, one nay. 14 yeas, one nay, the resolution is adopted. Chair Hillis, you can proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. That completes my report to the Public Safety Committee. Thank you very much. Um, we'll move to the City Utilities. Is there a report from City Utilities Chair uh, Shuck? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. We did our work in committee. Uh, however, I would like to remind the members, uh, please uh, submit your 2022 uh, committee goals uh, by week's end. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now move to the Community Development Human Services Committee. This committee did not meet last week at the scheduled time. Uh, was a visit by President Biden and Vice President Harris, and thus the committee uh, did not have an opportunity to meet. And uh, at this point, I would entertain a motion to move to uh, Committee of the Whole so that the committee, uh, Community Development Human Services Committee can have their meeting. So is there a motion for us to move to Committee of the Whole? So moved, Dozier. Moved by Mr. Second. Dozier. Is there a second? Second, Amos. Seconded by Council Member Amos. Uh, any discussion? Seeing no discussion, we'll move to a vote. Mr. Clark, would you please call for the vote? The vote is open. Will everyone please vote? <laughs> Reflecting vote. Councilman Bond, how would you like to have your vote reflected? Aye. Councilman Westmoreland? In favor? Councilman Shook? Aye. The vote is now closed. 15 yeas, 0 nays. 15 yeas, 0 nays. We now are in committee of the whole. Uh, and Mr. Dozier, I will turn it over to you as chair of Community Development Human Services Committee. Thank you so much, President Shipman. Um, so this is Council Mayor Jason Dozier. As, as was said before, uh, we did not meet during our regularly scheduled time last week. And so we're going to be conducting our meeting uh, during the committee of the whole. Uh, as our first order of business, we have the election of the 2022 Community Development and Human Services Vice Chair position. Uh, I would like to nominate Council Member Matt Westmoreland to serve as Vice Chair of the committee. Are there any other nominations? Any 
If there are no objections, I make a motion to appoint Council Member Westmoreland as the Vice Chair of the Community Development and Human Services Committee. Thank you. Is there a second? Second by Wade. Second by Wade. Because we are in Committee of the Whole, this actually is a vote of the entire Council just on a technicality. Uh, but uh, I think we can adopt this via unanimous consent if there's no objection. Are there any objections to the motion? Hearing none, Mr. Clerk, please uh, uh, call the count. Yeah, turn it a little bit. Yes, I'm going to say it's 15 yeas, zero nays. 15 yeas, zero nays. Mr. Westmoreland is the Vice Chair. Congratulations, Mr. Dozier, please proceed. Thank you so much, President Chairman. Uh, the, the next item on our agenda is the 2022 Community Development Human Services Goals and Objectives. Uh, committee members uh, sent an email today uh, that included uh, last year's goals and objectives for uh, frame of reference. Uh, please, if you could, uh, share your thoughts uh, your concerns or your ideas uh, with Ms. Lindo. Uh, and uh, as we are prepared to adopt our 2022 goals and objectives at our, uh, our January uh, 25th meeting. So please send your recommendations to Ms. Lindo and she will compile a list and send it out to everyone to review prior to our next meeting. And so that's all I'll say about that. But you have a copy of uh, the uh, 2021 objectives to give you an idea of, of uh, what I'm asking of you. Uh, Mr. Clerk, uh, the next section that I'm tracking is public comment. Do we have any public comments? Yes, we do. We have eight minutes. Please go ahead and uh, I'll play those. Mr. Massenburg. Oh, God. 
ancestral land use designation to the mixed, uh, uh, mixed use, medium density land uh, use designation and for other purposes. The next item is 22-0-1039, CDP 20-027, an ordinance by Community Development and Human Services Committee to amend the land use element of the 2021 Atlanta Comprehensive Development Plan so as to redesignate property located at 365 Lenhurst Drive Southwest and 0 Lenhurst Drive Southwest from the single family residential land use designation to the medium density residential land use designation and for other purposes. The next item, number three, is 22-0, I'm sorry, 22-0-1040, CDP-21-044, an ordinance by Community Development and Human Services Committee to amend the land use element of the 2021 Atlantic Comprehensive Development Plan so as to redesignate property located at 1101 Church Street Northwest from the single family residential land use designation to a low density residential land use designation and for other purposes. Next item number four, 22-0-1041, CDP 21046, an ordinance by Community Development and Human Services Committee to amend the land use element of the 2021 Atlantic Comprehensive Development Plan so as to redesignate property located at 559, 565, and 569 10th Street Northwest and 997 Current Street Northwest from the low density residential zero to eight units per acre land use designation to the mixed use medium density land use designation and for other purposes. Next item, number five, 22-0-1042. CDP-21-054, an ordinance by Community Development Human Services Committee to amend the land use element of the 2021 Atlanta Comprehensive Development Plan so as to redesignate property located at 1258, 1262, 1264, and 1287 Donnelly Hollow Parkway Northwest and 593 and 605 Anthony Street Northwest from the open space land use designation to a mixed use land use designation and for other purposes. And item number six, 22-0-1043, CDP-21-37, an ordinance by Community Development and Human Services Committee to amend the land use element of the 2021 Atlanta Comprehensive Development Plan to ask to redesignate property located at 525 Langhorn Street Southwest from the low density residential land use designation to the high density residential land use designation and for other purposes. Next item number seven, 22-0-1044, <clears throat> CDP-21-0. 045, an ordinance by Community Development and Human Services Committee to amend the land use element of the 2021 Atlanta Comprehensive Development Plan so as to redesignate property located at 1056, 1066, 1100, and 1088 Murphy Avenue Southwest and 12, I'm <clears throat> sorry, and 1127 and 1135 Silver Road Southwest from the industrial land use designation to the mixed use medium density land use designation and for other purposes. Next item number eight, 22-0-1045, CDP-21-053, an ordinance by Community Development and Human Services Committee to amend the land use element of the 2021 Atlanta Comprehensive Development Plan so as to redesignate property located at 570 Splash Shoals Avenue Southeast from the single family residential land use designation to a low density commercial LDC land use designation and for other purposes. Next item number nine, 22-0-1046, CDP-21-056, an ordinance by the Community Development and Human Services Committee to amend the land use element of the 2021 Atlanta Comprehensive Development Plan so as to redesignate property located at 534 Springdale Drive, southeast from the single family residential land use designation, the low density residential land use designation, and for other purposes. The next item, number 10, 22 0 1047, CDP-21-058, an ordinance by the Community Development and Human Services Committee to amend the land use element of the 2021 uh, Atlantic Comprehensive Development Plan so as to redesignate property located at 495 North Avenue Northeast and 0 North Avenue Northeast from the mixed use medium density land use design to the mixed use high density land use designation and for other purposes. Next item number 11, 22 0 1048, CDP 21 060, an ordinance by Community Development and Human Services Committee to amend the land use element of the 2021 
on Atlanta Comprehensive Development Plan. So it's a redesignated property located at 2387 Summit Avenue Northwest and 1107 First Street Northwest from the single family residential land use designation to the medium density residential land use designation and for other purposes. The next item number 12 to 20, I'm sorry, 22-0-1049. CDP-21-061, an ordinance by Community Development and Human Services Committee to amend the land use element of the 2021 Atlanta Comprehensive Development Plan so as to redesignate property located at 2590 Watkins Street Northwest from the single family residential land use designation to the low density residential land use designation and for other purposes. And then finally, <clears throat> item number 13, 22-0-1050, CDP-21-061. Dash 063, an ordinance by Community Development and Human Services Committee to amend the land use element of the 2021 Atlanta Comprehensive Development Plan so as to redesignate property located at 1010, 1016, 1024, and 0 Donnelly Avenue, Southwest Rear, and 950 Lawton Street, Southwest, from the low density residential 0 to 8 units per acre land use designation to the low density residential land use designation and for other purposes. Uh, Mr. President, I would like to uh, motion for the first read to refer to uh, community development, the Community Development and Human Services Committee. Yes, as being on first read, those will remain in your committee for consideration. Point of order. Yes, Mr. Barr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I bet to do this before you read those in, Mr. Chair. Is that necessary to sound all those items as the president pointed out they remain in your committee and listed publicly uh, for the public uh, so that it's not necessary to read all of the first reads in so in the future you, you're not required to do that thank you so much mr Byron. that is that is helpful all right so the last item that i have on the agenda uh, our uh, first read for resolution. Uh, I do have a uh, resolution 22-R-3049. Uh, and uh, and Mr. Byron, I won't read this one just uh, just because it's, it's, it's a little different than what we had before. Uh, but it is a resolution by Community Development and Human Services Committee authorizing the mayor on behalf of the city of Atlanta to apply for, accept, and enter into any necessary agreements as co-applicant with the Housing Authority of the City of Atlanta, Georgia, to the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development, FY 2021 Choice Neighborhoods Implementation Grant Program to facilitate the application for and implementation of the Choice Neighborhoods Implementation Grant Program for Bowen Homes and for other purposes. And uh, I believe uh, Ms. Terry Lee, the Chief Housing Officer and CEO at Atlanta Housing is on the call. Uh, Ms. Lee, are you on the call? Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Ms. Lee. I, I just wanted to ask if you had anything to add uh, to this particular uh, resolution, anything you want to speak to? Yes, absolutely, sir. Thank you so much, Council Member Dozier. And again, this is Terry Lee, the Chief Operating Officer for Atlanta Housing. Um, we're very excited to come before you today. The resolution that you have before you is for the Atlanta Housing to partner with the City of Atlanta as our co-applicant to submit an application to the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development for Choice Neighborhood Implementation Grant Funding. Um, the project itself is a former um, Bowen Homes. Um, it's about a 74-acre site. It is our vision, working along with the community, to reimagine re that site to be a mixed-use development that will include affordable housing, um, market-rate housing, as well as commercial commercial amenities that will service the community. Um, the application is largely based on the community development plan that was done in conjunction with the Department of City Planning in the neighborhood and adopted by City Council in November of 2021. We're also currently working on what we call the Bowen, Bowen Homes Choice Neighborhood Planning Grant. We were allocated funding in December of 2020 uh, for a planning grant that will, of course, support the implementation efforts that we're moving forward with. I would like to note that when we submitted for the planning grant and were awarded for the planning grant, um, HUD headquarters was, really, was not only impressed with our application, but felt that that area was really posed for an implementation grant. And so we would like to not 
maximize the opportunity to ensure that we can expedite the development of the former foreign home sites, and more importantly, really stabilize this area and provide more affordable housing opportunities. And thank you again, sir, for the opportunity. Um, we are partnering again with the City of Atlanta through the Department of City Planning, and I know Jan Stanley City Hall may be on the line as well from the Department of City Planning. Thank you so much, Ms. Lee. Mr. Mr. Dozier, if I might, uh, Council Member Hillis would like to speak. You might want to recognize him. I'm not sure you can see him. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. President Shipman. I just wanted to, uh, before I, I gave uh, Council Member Hillis an opportunity to speak, I wanted to see if the committee had any questions for uh, Ms. Lee. Uh, then we'll proceed to Mr. Hillis. Hearing none, um, uh, Council Member Hill, I recognize this is in uh, your city council district. Did you have any comments that you want to add? Yes, thank you, Chairman Dozier. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank Ms. Lee for her uh, leadership, the COO over Atlanta Housing, and uh, the partnership that we've had together uh, over the past year, year uh, or so, uh, meeting with uh, former Secretary of HUD, um, we got to the site and just wanted to uh, say how, how excited I am about this. This has been on my radar long before I was a council member. It's, uh, I believe, the largest uh, vacant Atlanta housing site in the city. It certainly is in District 9 uh, <laughs> and also not too far away from Bankhead Courts and Hollywood Courts, um, but this is in the heart of District 9. so. Looking forward to continuing the planning process uh, with the planning grant that we were awarded um, and applying for this implementation grant of up to $50 million to bring back Bowen, home, Bowen Homes uh, to District 9. Uh, very excited. Um, also, just wanted to uh, state that I uh, certainly uh, wish given Bowen Homes is entirely within District 9, and this would have came through uh, the council member and not been a committee paper. Uh, but my guess is that's a relic of the former administration and their desire not to uh, work with council members. Uh, so that's where I'll place that blame for now. And in that vein, uh, I have an amendment uh, that uh, just adds a whereas clause uh, that uh, states District 9's dedication and participation in this program through the Doing Well Planning Grant process. Uh, so I'll offer that now, if that's okay with you, Mr. Chair. That That is good with me. And just so... Mr. Dozier, may, yeah. I offer, may I offer a quick point of order? Because we're in a committee of the whole, you actually do need a second to this resolution. Second. So thank you. Please proceed. Second to the amendment as well. <laughs> All right, I have a motion and a second. Um, I would like to uh, take a, would it be a vote of the committee of the whole? Is, is that correct? To amend? I need to, I need to offer the amendment first. Um, and my understanding is there are actually two amendments. One was sent out by Ms. Lundo uh, that um, stated a, a date change. I can go ahead and read both. Uh, that's helpful for you, Mr. Chair. That, that is, go ahead, Council Member Hills. So the First Amendment um, corrects the date in the Sixth Whereas Clause from June 16, 2021 to read June 16, 2022. And um, just um, procedurally, can, can I go ahead and read both amendments, uh, Mr. President or our parliamentarian? and uh, vote on them together, or do I need to read them separately? You can vote them together. All right, the second part of the amendment will be uh, adding a whereas clause uh, that states, whereas District 9 Council Member Dustin Hill has dedicated $25,000 from District 9's discretionary accounts for the Doing While Planning Program, which funds community-guided improvement projects during the planning process in the Bowen Homes area and the surrounding Cary Park neighborhood. So I'll make a motion to approve uh, those amendments. Second. Can we get a second? Second. We have a second. 
and for president, shipmen, or a parliamentary, because we take council the whole, we take a vote as a uh, full council, correct? Correct. So we will we will need any discussion on this, and then we can move to a vote on the amendment. Yeah, any discussion? Any discussion? There's not any discussion on the amendment, then I would ask the clerk to open up the vote on the amendment as offered to the Committee of the Whole. The vote is open. Will everyone please vote? Moreland, how would you like to have your vote reflected? Council Member Lewis, how would you like to have your vote reflected? In favor. Apologies, I was muted. Last one. And Lewis in favor as well. Duly noted. Populating vote. The vote is now closed. 15 yeas, zero nays. 15 yeas, zero nays. The amendment is adopted. The amendments are adopted. Uh, Chair Dozier, you now can uh, return to the main motion, the resolution. Thank you so much, uh, President Shimon. Uh, before uh, I, I do our final motion for this particular item. I'm, I'm, I'm aware that Deputy Commissioner Citadel from the Department of Planning is on the call. Uh, did you have any comments that you wanted to share uh, for the body, uh, Deputy Commissioner Citadel? Um, thank you, Chairman Dozier. Um, no, I think uh, Terry Lee uh, covered everything that needs to be said in, in terms of the grant, so we look forward to your favorable consideration. Thank you so much. Uh, with, with that being said, I would like to make a motion to refer to uh, the committee, the, the Community Development and Human Service Committee. Councilmember Hill, just a point of order. Yes, Councilmember. This should be a final consideration because it's a resolution that was listed um, um, on the last Tuesday's agenda as a as a resolution for final adoption, I believe. Get clarity from that. Miss Lindo's on the line. So, so this would be final consideration in committee. Since we're in committee as a whole, when then we move out of committee of a whole, we can actually consider adoption of the resolution. Thank you so much for the clarification. Um, I want to take uh, a motion to approve as amended. A motion to adopt to approve as amended. Hello. Removing the approval, Mr. Clerk, would you please open the vote for a committee of a whole on the resolution? Please hold. The vote is now open. Will everyone please vote? Reflecting vote. Councilman Bond, how would you like to have your vote reflected? Aye. Councilman Westmoreland? In favor. Populating vote. The vote is now closed. 15 yeas, zero nays. 15 yeas, zero nays, adopted as a Chair Dozier, do you have any other business? No, Ms. Uh, President Shipman, that concludes uh, my committee support. Thank you, Chair Dozier. Seeing that we're still in committee of a whole, uh, I would entertain a motion to move out of committee of a whole. So moved. 
Thank you, moved by, uh, chair, by council member by chair, do you have a second? Second. Second, Winston. Second by Mr. Winston. Uh, we'll move out of committee of a whole by unanimous consent without objection. Is there any objection to moving out of committee of a whole? We're going to move out of committee of a whole by unanimous consent. Mr. Clerk, please read the tally. Unanimous consent of members present is 15 yeas, 0 nays. 15 yeas, 0 nays. Move out of committee of a whole back into our council meeting. Do I have a motion to adopt the resolution? that was considered in the Community Development Committee. So moved, Hillis. Second. Mr. Hillis. Mr. Hillis has moved. Mr. Hillis has seconded. Um, Mr. Clark, am I correct that this is 22R-3049 that's under consideration just for the clarification of the members? Yes, Mr. President. Thank you. So it's been moved and seconded to adopt 22R-3049. Is there any discussion? Mr. President. Mr. Bond? You stated that Mr. Hillis moved and seconded. He had to vote. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you for that clarification. Really good. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Hillis has moved. Who's that that seconded? Second. Mr. Bond has seconded. Thank you, Mr. Bond. Now, is there any discussion on the resolution? Hearing none, we'll move to vote. Mr. Clark, would you please call for the vote on the resolution? Please vote. Consulting LLC under cooperative purchasing agreement number listed 
ATL Cloud Implementation and Post-Implementation Support Services for Revenue Forecast Update and Fiscal Year 2023 Plan Support Services. On behalf of the Department of Finance, in an amount not to exceed $160,000 in zero cents, all contracted work to be charged to and paid from accounts listed herein and for other purposes. This came out favorable from the committee with one extension, which was mine. Um, I had subsequently had a conversation with the finance department uh, who um, answered my questions satisfactorily with that. Mr. President, the motion comes from the committee uh, as favorable to the document. Given that it is coming out of the committee, it's not second. Is there any discussion on 22R3041? Hearing no discussion, we'll move to a vote. Mr. Clark, would you please open the vote on the resolution? The vote is open. Will everyone please vote? Reflecting vote. Councilman Bond, how would you like to have your vote reflected? Aye. Councilman Westmoreland, how would you like to have your vote? In favor. Councilman Lewis? Aye. The vote is now closed. 15 yeas, zero nays. 15 yeas, zero nays. The resolution is adopted. Chairperson Wong. Yeah, thank you. I, I do not have any more legislation, but I do have two quick announcements, if I might. Um, the first is uh, similar to the City Utilities Committee, um, to the members of the Finance Exec, uh, if you will review the goals and objectives for 2022 and get those to either me or Ms. Henson right by this Friday. We'll be sure to have them before us at our next meeting. Also, uh, at the previous finance meeting, we had shared that we were going to delay the start of our January 26th meeting due to the Buckhead Coalition luncheon. As many of you know, that has now been postponed to March. Therefore, our January 26th meeting should be uh, commencing on time as scheduled. Mr. President, that's all I have for the, for the council. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll now move to our final committee, Committee on Council, Chairperson Booth. Thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon, everyone. Please turn to page 35 on your agenda for the report of the Standing Committee on Council for item number one. Resolution 22-R-3003, item one. A resolution by Council Member Alex One to be appointed as a replacement for former Council Member Jennifer I to serve as a member of the Alcohol Technical Advisory Group, APAC, for the duration of the existence and for other purposes. Colleagues, we refer this item to the full Council with no recommendation in this morning's Committee on Council meeting because this is a council appointment. Motion to adopt. There's a motion to adopt the resolution. It does not need a second it's coming out of committee. Uh, Mr. Wan, would you like to speak to this since it uh, pertains to you? Mr. President, thank you. Um, so colleagues, I appreciate your consideration of this paper. Um, for those that aren't familiar with ATAG, it was formed, uh, ATAG 3 was formed in 2021, and it is a group made of council members, the department uh, representatives, and community business members to review the alcohol code and make recommendations for improvement. Um, my predecessor, council member I, was one of the two council appointees uh, to the to ATAC 3, the other was um, my esteemed colleague, Michael Julian Bond. Um, there was a lot of great momentum and work that was done last year, culminating in a piece of legislation at the end of the year. Uh, in order to continue that momentum on an issue that is important, not just in my district, but uh, I know that all of us are experiencing the effects of um, uh, consequences of, of some of the bad actors around the alcohol code. 
Um, I want to make sure that we keep that momentum going uh, and respectfully request your consideration uh, for my appointment to this so that um, I can continue the work that my predecessor had started. I'm happy to answer any questions that he might, might have. Thank you. Just uh, the parliamentarian has pointed out that this just came out of committee without a recommendation. We should take a second on this resolution. So it's been moved by Council Member Boone. Is there a second? Second. No. Seconded, by Seconded by Council Member Norwood. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on the resolution? Hearing no discussion, we will move to a vote on 22R3003. Mr. Clerk, please open the vote. The vote is now open. Will everyone please vote? Reflecting vote. Councilman Barn, how would you like to have your vote reflected? Aye. Councilman Westmoreland. In favor. Councilman Lewis. In favor. Populating vote. Vote is now closed. 15 yeas, zero nays. 15 yeas, zero nays. The resolution is adopted. Chairperson Boone, please proceed. Next item, 22-R-3051, a resolution by committee on council authorizing the mayor to execute renewal agreement number one with Conway Parliamentarian Services for SP-S-120297 City Council Parliamentary Services on behalf of the Atlanta City Council in an amount not to exceed $70,000. All contract work shall be charged to and paid from account numbers listed herein and for other purposes. This item was found favorable with one abstention. Motion to adopt. This has come out of committee with favorable. It does not need a second. Is there any discussion on 22R3054? Hearing no discussion, we'll move to a vote. Mr. Clark, please open the vote. The vote is open. Will everyone please vote? <laughs> Reflecting vote. Councilman Bond, how would you like to have your vote reflected? Aye. Councilman Westmoreland? In favor. Councilman Lewis? In favor. Councilman Hillis? Aye. Populating vote. Vote is now closed. 15 yeas, zero nays. 15 yeas, zero nays. The resolution is adopted. Chairperson Boone, please proceed. Yes. Next item, resolution 22-R-3052, a resolution by committee on council to amend resolution 20 r that's 4119 for the purpose of removing the zoning committee and committee on council meetings from the committee of the whole during the regular scheduled meetings of city council and for other purposes. This item was found favorable. Motion to adopt. 22R3052, <clears throat> coming out of committee doesn't need a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing no discussion, we'll move to a vote on the resolution. Mr. Clerk, please open the vote. The vote is now open. Will everyone please vote? Reflecting. 
being bowed? Councilman Bond, how would you like to have your vote reflected? Aye. Councilman Westmoreland? In favor. Councilman Lewis? In favor. The vote is now closed. Populating vote. 15 yeas, 0 nays. 15 yeas, 0 nays. The resolution is adopted. Chairperson Boone, do you have any other business? This concludes my report. Thank you so much. Thank that, you. Concludes, that concludes the report of the standing committee. Thank you all. We will move to personal papers or items for immediate consideration. Mr. Clerk, I believe that we have four papers for immediate consideration. Is that correct? I can't confirm at the moment, Mr. President. Oh, Mr. Patrick, we will begin with the ones that I know. Mr. Dozier, I believe you have a paper, a resolution for immediate consideration. Yes, I do, Mr. President. Would you like me to, to read that? Yes, please. All right, and I just want to acknowledge that I'm asking for immediate con uh, consideration because uh, this is in recognition of Santa Equity Day, which will be on February 4th, and our body will not meet again as a full uh, city council body before then. So I want to start with uh, uh, proposed with, uh, paper today. Uh, so uh, bear with me. There, there's some checks here and some context, but I, I think it's important. Uh, so whereas Rosa Parks was an iconic figure in the movement for social justice and racial equality and played a major role in the exception of the civil rights movement that ended up legal segregation in the United States, and whereas the immediate focus of Rosa Parks' historic protest was the unequal access of African Americans to public transit, and whereas unequal access to public transit based on race, income, and disability have persisted to this day and have to a degree become worse with cuts in public funding for transit and consequent fare increases in many transit systems, and whereas paratransit is necessary is a necessary component for any public transit system to ensure accessibility for people with disabilities who require it. Any expansion of public transit necessitates further strengthening of paratransit so that is minimally held to the same reliability and time life standards as other parts of the system. And whereas public transit jobs in the United States have historically been good jobs that pay family supporting wages, but in parallel to the cuts in public funding for transit and the trend of increasing fares, there is a growing marginalization of transit workers who are facing worsening work conditions and erosion of their collective bargaining rights. And whereas the need for affordable housing and travel is becoming even more urgent and equitable transit-oriented development shows promise in increasing the supply of affordable housing accessible by transit. And whereas affordable, reliable public transit is an essential public service on par with utilities such as water and electricity, and whereas humanity is faced with the growing crisis of climate change with record-breaking temperatures with consequences including sea level rise, prolonged drought, more frequent wildfires, more severe thermal flooding, and spread of diseases, and whereas the effects of climate change disproportionately hurt workers, people of color, and poor people and constitute the civil rights crisis of our time as seen so vividly in the devastation from daily heat waves, hurricanes, wildfires, and tornadoes, and whereas the overwhelming scientific consensus, consensus attributes the warming trend to human emissions of greenhouse gases from the combustion of fossil fuels such as oil, gas, and coal, and whereas it is essential for the survival of humanity to drastically cut our emissions of greenhouse gases and convert our economy to renewable, non-emitting energy sources, and whereas in recognition of the realities of climate change, and a need for a transition from fossil fuel to renewable energy. The AFL-CIO passed Resolution 55, Climate Change, Energy and Union Jobs to its 2017 Convention. And whereas emissions from the transportation system are a major part of greenhouse gas emissions, and whereas transitioning our transportation system from excessive automobile dependence to public transit, especially like especially electrified public transit with electricity for renewable sources is key to transitioning our economy from fossil fuels to renewable energy and cutting our greenhouse gas emissions. And whereas required expansion of public transit to address the climate crisis provides an unprecedented opportunity
opportunity to continue the tradition of Rosa Parks and the civil rights movement by ensuring that transit systems are affordable and accessible and that people of color, economically disadvantaged people, people with disabilities, and other marginalized populations have full access to the benefits of public transit. And whereas the required expansion of public transit to address the climate crisis also provides an unprecedented opportunity to create a large number of good, high-skilled family supporting transit operations jobs as well as construction jobs for building new transit facilities. And whereas the growth of public transit will also reduce automobile pollutants such as nitrogen oxide, in particular matter that have the worst impact on the communities closest to highways and other bigger roads, which tend to be disproportionately communities of color and economically disadvantaged communities. And whereas increased community access to public transit, reduction in racial, economic, and other disparities in access to transit and clean air, and in the burden of climate change impacts, and increased opportunity for employment and good jobs, form a key part of a just transition from a carbon intensive fossil fuel based, highly unequal, extractive economy to a pollution free, regenerative, renewable energy based, just economy. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Atlanta, Georgia that the City of Atlanta supports the call to observe a day of action on public transportation as a civil right on February 4th, 2022. Be it further resolved that the City of Atlanta will draw attention to the continuing racial, economic, and other inequalities in access to adequate public transit and the need for affordable and accessible transit through the day of action. Be it further resolved that the City of Atlanta will prioritize accessibility of public transit by making improvements to sidewalks crosswalks, bus stops, and supporting accessible mobility throughout the city. Be a further result that the city of Atlanta will focus on increased federal funding opportunities that prioritize equitable and climate impacting projects, including the utilization of the Justice 40 initiative. Be a finally resolved that the city of Atlanta will use the day of action by riding the bus to raise awareness of the opportunities and challenges facing transit and transit riders and to highlight the vital role that can be played by public transit in the required shift from a climate destroying fossil fuel powered extractive economy to a climate protecting renewable powered and regenerative economy with a just transition for communities and workers. And I will add that this is a resolution by Council Member Jason Dozier, Liliana Bakhtiari, Matt Westmoreland, Jason Winston, and Amir Faroki. Resolution albums 28791, moved by Mr. Dozier, uh, seconded by one of the co-sponsors would like to second. Bakhtiari, second. Seconded by Councilor Bakhtiari. Is there discussion Mr. on the resolution? Mr. President. Mr. Bonham. I'd like to ask the author if he'd add my name to the resolution. Mr. Dozier, before you do that, uh, is there anyone else who would like their name added to the resolution? Overstreet, just raise my hand. Oh. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Councilmember Overstreet, Councilmember Boone, anyone else? Councilmember Council Member Amos. Councilmember Amos. Juan, please. Councilmember Juan, anyone else? I suggest you have Any discussion on the resolution with the additions of the co sponsor? Hearing none, uh, we can move this by unanimous consent if there is no objection. Yeah, sure. Roll call, please. Yes, Mr. Yeah. Short. We yeah. have to have a roll call. Mr. Clark. We are going to move to a vote on Elms 28791 resolution by Councilmember Jason Dozier and others. Please open the vote. Please vote. The vote is now open. Will everyone please vote? Reflecting vote. Councilman Bond, how would you like to have your vote reflected? Aye. Councilman Boone. 
Councilman Wes Moreland. In favor. The vote is now closed. 14 yeas, one nay. 14 yeas, one nay. The resolution is adopted. Uh, Mr. Faroki, I believe that you have a resolution for immediate consideration. Thank you, Mr. President. It is Elms number 28790, and this paper is being introduced um, for immediate consideration because uh, it is in recognition of the 50th anniversary of Roe v. Wade, and that falls on January 22nd, which is a few days from now, so uh, uh, that's why it is being proposed for a vote today. Uh, resolution by Council Members Amir Faroki, Alex Wan, Jason Winston, Liliana Bakhtiari, Jason Dozier, Antonio Lewis, Marcy Collier Overstreet, and Andrea Boone, expressing the city of Atlanta's support to the United States Supreme Court's landmark decision in the case of Roe v. Wade and its commitment to protect the right to access to access abortion care in Atlanta and for other purposes. Whereas on January 22, 1973, the United States Supreme Court ruled in the case of Roe v. Wade that the Constitution of the United States safeguards a person's ability to make their own personal medical decisions about when or whether to have children. And whereas the United States Supreme Court now contains a majority of justices who may not interpret the Constitution to provide protection for the right to end a pregnancy and may have returned or severely limited Roe v. Wade, and whereas if the protections, <clears throat> if the basic protections of Roe v. Wade are taken away, abortion will become much more difficult to access, with at least 26 states, including Georgia, likely to enact bans. And whereas Georgia has already passed many laws that pose extreme restrictions on the ability of its residents to access an abortion, including a ban after six weeks of pregnancy, a 24-hour waiting period, a parental notification requirement, and a ban on health plans offered on the state's health exchange, as well as insurance policies for public employees from covering abortion care beyond very limited situations. And whereas the harm of these abortion restrictions disproportionately impacts racial minorities, the disabled, rural Georgians, youth, immigrants, and those experiencing financial and economic hardship, and whereas access to comprehensive reproductive health care, including abortion, contraception, prenatal care, labor and delivery services, and postpartum care are necessary for people's overall health, and health care is a fundamental human right. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Atlanta, Georgia, that the Atlanta City Council hereby expresses its commitment to reproductive justice and protection of reproductive health care rights, which includes the right to access safe and legal abortion care and individuals' rights to make decisions about their own reproductive health, be it further resolved that the Atlanta City Council urges the Georgia legislature to join other states in protecting and promoting access to reproductive health care and the fundamental right to abortion by doing the following. One, promoting preventive health care services for all. Two, ensuring that every individual has access to comprehensive affordable health care that includes pregnancy-related care, including prenatal care, miscarriage management, family planning services, abortion care, labor and delivery services, and postnatal care. And three, improving access to reproductive health care. We finally resolved that the passage of this resolution, excuse me, that upon the passage of this resolution, the municipal clerk shall provide copies of the Fulton County District Attorney's Office, Governor Brian Kemp, as well as all, to all members of the Georgia General Assembly. Um, again, this is Elms number 28790 and moved to approve. Elms 28790 has been moved. Would one of the um, co sponsors like Juan? Yep, Juan, second. Mr. Juan has been seconded. Um, is there any discussion on the resolution? Mr. President, I'd like to add my name. Mr. Bond would like his name to be added. Anyone else would like their name to be added? Councilmember Amos. Councilmember Amos. Anyone else? Technically, technically, that is an amendment. So if they're, if they're without objection, those names will be added. Are there any objections adding those names? Then is there any other discussion on the resolution? Hearing no other discussion, we'll move to a vote on Elms 28790, resolution offered by Councilmember Faroki and others. Mr. Clark, please open the vote. Additionally, by unanimous consent of members present, the amendments have been approved. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Please read that total as well. That would be 15 yeas, zero nays. Thank you. And now the vote is open on the item. Will everyone please vote? Reflecting vote.
Hello? Councilman Bond, how would you like to have your vote reflected? Aye. Councilman Westmoreland? In favor. Councilman Lewis? In favor. Populating vote? You did a bit hard by the vote is now closed. 15 yeas, zero nays. 15 yeas, zero nays. The resolution is adopted. Uh, Councilman Mershook, I believe that you have a resolution for immediate consideration. Yes, if the uh, clerk could please read, read it. Bear with me one moment while I pull the legislation up. Continue to bear with it. Thank you for your patience. Elm number 28792, a resolution by Council Member Howard Shook, a resolution to congratulate the University of Georgia Bulldogs on winning the National Collegiate Athletic Association or NCAA National Championship Football and for other purposes. Whereas on January 10th, 2022, the University of Georgia Bulldogs clinched the National Championship Association in football with a 38-18 victory over the Alabama Crimson Tide, and whereas Georgia should be proud of the university's story history dating back to the founding of the school in 1785, whereas the University of Georgia football should be applauded for their success during the 2021 season, including preserving through the uncertainty of the COVID-19 pandemic. Whereas Georgia championship victory demanded the Bulldogs place atop the final Associated Press top 25 poll and the final American Football Coaches Association poll, and whereas the Bulldogs went 8-0 against Southern Conference opponents, a first for the program in this period. Whereas the team's historic defense captured national attention all season and led the nation and opponents per, per game and per yard allowed, whereas the entire Bulldog roster contributed to the national championship victory. And whereas head coach Kirby Smart, the coaching staff and supporting staff of the Georgia deserve much appreciated and credit for the national championship through preparing and investing in their players and whereas the Bulldogs displayed sportsmanship, dedication, and a competitive drive throughout the championship season. Whereas the Bulldogs and the pride of students, alumni, and loyal.
citizens of the city of Atlanta and the state of Georgia. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the city council of the city of Atlanta, Georgia, that the Atlanta City Council hereby congratulates the football team, the university, and all the fans of the Bulldog Success 2021 season and historic national championships. Be it finally resolved that upon passage of the resolution, the municipal clerk shall transmit an official copy of the resolution to the university system of Georgia and the athletic director of the University of Georgia. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Do I have a second for the resolution? I think Matt, may I speak? Um, go ahead, go ahead. And I heard Mr. Bond with a second, so please proceed, Mr. Shook. Yeah, thank you. You know, um, I understand the reluctance of Mr. Warren and our mayor, who are proud tech fans, uh, UGA graciously uh, accepted and matriculated my wife and both of our daughters. And so uh, I support this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shook. Um, is there any discussion on the resolution? Mr. President. Mr. Bond. Yeah, I'd like to have my name added. Uh, would anyone else like to have their name added to the resolution? Mr. President, this is Council Member Doja. I enthusiastically would like to have my name added to this resolution as well. I've heard Council Member Dozier. I've heard Council Member Boone. Anyone else? Hey, Council Member uh, my son is a, a UGA graduate. I don't usually like immediate consideration unless the house is on fire, but this is huge and 41 years in the making. So, Overstreet. Council Member Overstreet to be added. Who else? Council no, Member Bakhtiari. Council Member Bakhtiari. Who else? Firewood. Westmoreland. <laughs> Council Member Amos, Council Member Westmoreland, Council Member Norwood. Who else? Wait, 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 on. Didn't you want to be added as well? Council Member Lewis as well. Council Member Waits, Council Member Lewis. Go dogs. Hillis. Winston. Council Member Winston. Hillis. Faroki. Council Member Hillis, Council Member Faroki. Did I hear Council Member Bond you wanted to be added? Yes, he started. Anyone else? I, without objection, we will amend with all of the additional members on the resolution. Are there any objections or else we'll add those with unanimous consent? Mr. Clerk, please call uh, the uh, count. Unanimous consent of members present. It's 15 yeas, zero nays. The resolution is amended. Uh, Mr. Juan, I believe you want to speak. Mr. Juan, I had seen that you wanted to speak. Are you muted? There we go. They just unmuted me. Um, there, yeah, I just first wanted to affirm that there was no one else who wanted to sign on as a co-sponsor, uh, pun intended. Um, but I, uh, Mr. Shook, I, I will spend the next three years um, figuring out a way to get you back for spraying this on me today. All that said, uh, as a Georgia Tech graduate that believes white and gold, um, I have to say I'm quite proud that uh, the football national championship is in the great state of Georgia. Um, and probably much to your surprise, I will be voting in favor. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Is there any other discussion on the resolution? Hearing no further discussion, we'll move to a vote on Elms 28792, resolution by Council Member Shook and others who have been added. Mr. Clerk, please open the vote. The vote is open. Will everyone please vote? Reflect. 
Steve Steamboat. Councilman Westmoreland, how would you like to have your vote reflected? In favor? Aye. We have you, Councilman Barton. You were the seconder. The vote is now closed. 15 yeas, 0 nays. 15 yeas, 0 nays. The resolution is adopted. Uh, Council Member Waits, I believe you had a resolution for immediate consideration. I do, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I rise to ask for immediate consideration given uh, the recent surge in violent crime throughout the city, uh, in addition to the fact that a number of residents and business owners uh, throughout the city have expressed concerns with the need uh, to adopt uh, such a measure citywide. Uh, this is IMS 28774, which is a resolution by Council Member Keisha Sean Waite. A uh, resolution to amend 21 r 3441 adopted by the Atlanta City Council on May 17th of 2021 and approved per City Charter Section 2 40 on May 26, 2021, establishing the Public Safety Commission to provide an organized and collaborative structure for discussion and recommendation of best practices regarding the emergency and non emergency public safety policies in order to expand the purpose of the commission to include the development and implementation of a public safety plan to deter, deter crime and lawlessness and enhance safety measures throughout the city of Atlanta and for other purposes. Whereas Article 1, Section 1-102, Subsection B of the City of Atlanta Charter vests the city with all powers necessary and proper to promote the safety, health, peace, and general welfare of the city and all of its inhabitants. Whereas public safety functions within the city of Atlanta include emergency and non-emergency functions, which are the responsibility of various departments and offices within the city of Atlanta government, including but not limited to the Atlanta Police Department, the Atlanta Fire and Rescue Department, the Atlanta Department of Corrections, and the Municipal Court and other judicial agencies. Whereas in order to provide an organized and collaborative structure for discussion and recommendations of best practices regarding emergency and non-emergency public safety policies within the city of Atlanta, resolution 21-R-3441 established a public safety commission. And whereas the city of Atlanta has experienced a citywide surge in crime and lawlessness which has impacted all neighborhoods, business districts, and commercial quarters throughout the city of Atlanta, Whereas 22, resolution 22-R-3001 was introduced to create a Buckhead Public Safety Task Force to partner with the local business leaders, neighborhood associations, law enforcement professionals to develop and implement a comprehensive plan to defer crime and enhance public safety in the Buckhead communities, business districts, and commercial quarters. Whereas there is a need citywide to develop and implement a comprehensive public safety plan that will stem the rise in crime to provide all residents of the city of Atlanta with safer neighborhoods, business districts, and commercial quarters. Whereas the Public Safety Commission was established to be comprised of internal and external members of law enforcement and experts tasked with helping to promote a collaborative discussion regarding the best practices concerning emergency and non-emergency public safety policies within the city of Atlanta. Whereas the city of Atlanta has an opportunity to establish a partnership that also includes local Atlanta business leaders and community organizations to produce a comprehensive public safety plan with buy-in from all entities, including corporate and commercial owners, retail establishments, neighborhood associations, and nonprofit entities and institutions. Whereas the Public Safety Commission will focus on near term and long term actions aimed at increasing sustainable safety and security among the people who live, work, and visit the city of Atlanta. The city, whereas the city of Atlanta has a responsibility to implement policies and procedures to keep all residents and visitors in the city or to the city safe. Whereas expanding the purpose of the Public Safety Commission to include crime strategy and amending its membership to include business leaders and neighborhood associations will serve to provide a body with the capacity to collectively address many of the public safety related issues impacting all of the city of Atlanta. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the city of Atlanta, the Atlanta
to Georgia that resolution 21-R-3441 adopted by the city of Atlanta on May 17th of 2021 and approved per charter section 2-403 on May 26th of 2021 establishing the Public Safety Commission is hereby amended to expand the purpose of the commission to include the development uh, of a comprehensive public safety plan to deter crime and lawlessness and to enhance safe public safety throughout the entire city and to amend its membership to include business and neighborhood leaders. Be it further resolved that the members of the Public Safety Commission shall consist of the following, uh, the mayor or his designee, city council president or his designee, council members uh, that are on the Public Safety Committee, uh, which shall be non-voting ex factio members, uh, the chair of the Public Safety uh, and Legal Administration Committee and or his designee, chair of the Board of Education and or her designee, chief of the Poli Atlanta Police Department or uh, the assigned designee, the city attorney or designee, Fulton County Board of Commissioners uh, or their designee, Fulton County Sheriff, the appropriate designee, Fulton County Solicitor, appropriate designee, Fulton County District Attorney, appropriate designee, MARTA, the appropriate designee, City Solicitor, appropriate designee, Atlanta Public Defender, the designee, Atlanta Central Progress, the designee, the Atlanta Citizens Review Board, the designee, the Atlanta Policing Alternatives and Diversion Initiative, PAD, the designee, the chair of the City of Atlanta House Delegation, its designee, and the chair of the Atlanta Senate designate delegation, their designee, uh, four members shall be appointed by the Atlanta Planning and Advisory Board, be it resolved further that the Public Safety Commission is hereby established for a period of 24 months, effective upon approval of this resolution. Be it further resolved that members of the Public Safety Commission shall be require confirmation by the City Council. Be it further resolved that the author of this legislation shall commence the first meeting of the body at which a chairperson shall be elected. Be it further resolved that the Public Safety Commission shall be comprised of working groups to be determined by the body designed to focus on crime and deterrence and the enforcement and the application of existing laws. Be it further resolved that the Public Safety Commission shall meet on a minimum or quarterly basis or as deemed necessary and shall provide a biannual summary of activities of the Public Safety and Legal Administration Committee with, final, with the final recommendation submitted to the full council. It be it finally resolved that any resolution in conflict with this resolution hereby waived to the extent of the conflict. Mr. President, I, I make a motion uh, to adopt and I ask for your favorable uh, consideration. I also want to thank Councilwoman Shepherd, uh, who is the original author of the legislation for her work and efforts surrounding this measure. Thank you. Is there a motion to adopt resolution 28774? Is there a second? Second, second. Norwood. It's been seconded by Councilmember Norwood. Is there discussion on the resolution? Mr. President. Mr. Bond is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. And thank you, uh, Councilwoman, Councilperson Waits for introducing this uh, legislation. There's two quick points. One, I would like to add my name. And then second, I didn't hear the mention of our municipal courts being represented on the commission and wondered if she might consider adding them or their or they need from the, to the body. Mr. Chair, go ahead. I'll recognize you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Council Member Bunn, uh, for the addition, and I, I would support making the addition. Okay. Council Member Wan. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, so, uh, you know, I think what Mr. Bond did was just a good example. I, I'm curious as to why this is up for immediate consideration and is not going to make its way through our regular process, uh, committee process for further vetting to make sure that the composition of the, the, uh, or the group is correct. Um, you know, I, I, for one, I was listening, trying to listen intently to the appointees to the, the committee. 
Um, but I also am concerned, I did understand that it was all the members of public safety, but then if you're not on public safety, um, it, it seems odd to me that, that we wouldn't do, it, wouldn't do it a different way that tries to also incorporate community voices, the, the folks in the community on the street level who have been working, like you know, street captains, the, the security, not patrols, but all the efforts that are doing around community-based policing. So I am curious as to why um, this is this shouldn't go through our committee system, and I'd like to hear Ms. Council Member Waits' um, response to that, because uh, if, if not, I may make a substitute motion. Uh, Council Member Waits, would you like to speak to that? Absolutely, and thank you, Council Member One, for the point of order. Uh, so this actual uh, measure came forward in the Public Safety Committee where I actually asked to make some amendments to the Buckhead Public Safety Task Force. Uh, however, I'm not opposed to that particular measure, so I made the decision to take a look at doing something different in introducing legislation citywide. Uh, it was brought to my attention that this particular piece of legislation was already uh, codified into law. So, uh, Council Member One, this measure has already passed as of May uh, 2021. We're just simply making some changes. Uh, additionally, one of the challenges that we saw was that there were so many uh, members that were a part uh, of this particular measure that they never really fully got off the ground to do its work. So we will restructure it a bit to make it more effective uh, in addition to change the time frame from 36 months to 24 months to make it more palatable for people uh, who have very, very busy schedules uh, to attract more individuals to this process. To speak to the purpose uh, or the point of community individuals, we actually did make a change and add it uh, to the legislation for members uh, of the APAP Planning Advisory Committee. Uh, in addition to uh, the uh, APAP, the Atlanta Policing Alternative Diversion, uh, those individuals, I think also, have uh, a pretty intimate relationship in terms of some of the challenges that we're facing. Uh, but to your point, uh, the members of the Public Safety Committee, as well as the chair, uh, were given prior notice during committee that we would introduce this measure. Uh, and I'm happy to make that change on line three, whereas you will report back to the Public Safety Committee. I'm happy uh, to change that to the entire uh, body of this council. Uh, and, and ask for your favorable consideration. Uh, given the reason as to the urgency, again, uh, as you are aware, we're experiencing a citywide surging crime that has impacted all of our communities, uh, the business community, our commercial quarters, as well as our tourism uh, industry. And I think that we don't want to send a message citywide that we're putting the needs of one community over another. And so for that reason, I ask for your favorable consideration and immediate consideration today. Thank you, Council Member Waits. And I appreciate additional background information that this was already stood up um, or at least um, moved through Council last year. Um, you know, I, I guess for this particular Council Member, um, you know, I, I just appreciate the deliberative process that engages not just public safety committee, but also the full council in terms of if there are changes or amendments that should be considered to the composition of, of that particular board, rather than um, here today on council floor with folks just naming other folks uh, that should be on there and, and whether the author accepts it or not. Um, we, we have a process, a legislative process for a reason, um, especially with something that's important uh, that is going to try and address it citywide. Um, I do think it's important that uh, the, the, the full council gets a chance to, to weigh in on that. So um, with that, I'm going to make a substitute motion to refer to Public Safety Committee uh, for further deliberation. Hopefully I'll, uh, I'll have a colleague that will second that um, so that we can really take the time that we should be taking on, on a matter that is as important. Second, Baruki. Mr. Wan has made a motion Mr. Faroki has seconded that motion to substitute this and, and send it to committee. Uh, that is debatable motion. So is there any discussion on that motion? Mr. President, at the appropriate time, this is Council Member Waite. Council Member Waite, you're recognized. Like you're recognized. Council Member Norwood would like to be recognized. Thank you. Council Member Waite first and then Council Member Norwood. Thank you so much. 
Uh, as I pointed out earlier, I just simply wanted to echo my point that this measure was actually brought through uh, and, and spoken of at the last public safety uh, meeting. Uh, it's my understanding that no members of the public safety uh, committee had any opposition to it, including the chair. Uh, in addition to the fact that we have moved uh, another measure that reflects one specific community and in my opinion uh, leaves the other communities uh, without a voice. And so for that reason, it's my feeling that today this matter is something that's urgent and that it should require immediate consideration. Again, as I've indicated, I am happy to, you know, support any amendments or any additional requirements that you think will give the measure teeth. And also, too, I think it's also important to note that this legislation has already been codified into law in May of 2021. So we're just simply making some changes uh, to strengthen it. And again, uh, Council Member One, if you have any changes you would like to bring forth, I'm happy and open to that conversation. Council Member Norwood. Yes, I want to support passing the resolution today. I agree with Council Member Waits that because it already is an ordinance uh, uh, resolution on the city's books, it already is law. I would like to see us go ahead. We can always modify a composition, have a report from a group that maybe was not included, but certainly as I looked over the legislation, it has, it is very expansive and I think will go a very long way in having the entire city feel like this city council is addressing their concerns about their safety. Council Member Shook, you're recognized. Yeah, thank you. Question, uh, is there concern that the uh, Norwood legislation would divert resources from other parts of the city to budget? And that, I'm sorry. That hasn't been brought up. That has not been brought up. Council Member, Council Member, <laughs> Council Member Lewis, you're recognized. Council Member Norwood, I can recognize you as well after Council Member Lewis. Yes, I, I brought up earlier that we, we, because we are just one city, we only need one, one way to do it. We did do it for budget here by itself. We will be moving resources, uh, valuable resources that District 12 needs as well uh, to a part that has less crime than District 12. Now, I would like to run uh, Mary Norwood's bill as a companion piece to Council Member Keisha Waite's bill. I mean, uh, or... Councilmember Norwood, you're recognized. Uh, I well, believe. I thought I had a report. That's fine. Um, the uh, Buckhead community uh, had a public safety uh, meeting that, that Councilmember Shook, Councilmember Massagite were a part of, along with Fulton County elected officials along with the um, police foundation. So over over the past two or three years, there have certainly been um, meetings and, and strategies. And as you know, um, the Buckhead Council of Neighborhoods took a strong stand against street racing, which was plaguing every community in the city, not just one particular part of it. We also took strong stands on several other public safety initiatives so our Buckhead Council of Neighborhoods has been very involved in making sure that anything that we did could have um, uh, positive effects uh, throughout our city. Uh, this will be no different than that, uh, but I applaud Council Member Waits reinvigorating um, a, a piece of legislation that, it, that evidently, from what I understand from today, really was not acted upon and so it's now months and months later so i think the time is appropriate to have both of these um both of these items look at public safety in our city so i'd just like to remind everyone the motion on the table is to refer to committee if we could keep our comments to whether or not we should refer to committee um those are the germane uh, comments to the motion. Mr. Shook, I believe you wanted to speak. Well, I actually think I have the floor. Correct me if I'm wrong. 
That is not correct. You, you did not pose a question. You posed a question to the body, so I allow discussion to continue, but you are recognized now. Yeah. So, hey, Mr. Lewis, your contention, as clearly stated, is that uh, public safety resources would be, by virtue of the passage of Ms. Norwood's resolution, devoted to Bucket. Please back that up. If you look at the bill, the people that she had resources as a time commitment as well. And so to have a, a specific time commitment of our police team for the county and in this one neighborhood of Atlanta, a dare park needs one as well. A dare park was voted number three neighborhood in the city of Atlanta, so a dare park will want the same thing. We want the same thing the budget wants on District 12. We want what y'all got. So with peace that bill being wide, I, I think I like that bill more. And Mary Bill can be a companion piece to it. And I might uh, copy her bill and, and make a companion piece to it on the south side. Okay. Thank you. Then introduce legislation of uh, introducing a grassroots organization that's devoted to doing what Miss Norwood's bill wants. This, this doesn't take resources away from anybody. In fact, it's a vehicle to let bucket resources coalesce that, that would allow other resources to be spent throughout the city. I, I find this highly offensive. Thank you. Well, well, well and still, I find it highly offensive as well when we just keep separating one neighborhood. So oh. we can use you're the one dividing this city. You're the one dividing this city. Mr. Shook, Mr. 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 Lewis has the floor. Well, 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 I think my bill said all of us together. That's not dividing the city. My bill saying, hey, I mean, you know, Keisha Waste bill saying everybody is not dividing the city. I even said I signed on to that one. I think dividing the city is if we give one specific area a police task force of. And I want what they want. What's the, what's the guy in the city by that? Someone had wanted to speak. I'm sorry, I did not hear their voice. Mr. Chair, this is Council Member Waits. At the appropriate time, I'd like to be recognized. Council Member Waits, you're recognized. Okay. So I, I want to be very clear that, that in introducing the, the second or either the companion piece of legislation, it was not meant to be a distraction or to create a further polarizing uh, conversation today. I think we all uh, love our city and want to see us move forward. I want to be on the record to indicate that I am not opposed to the Buckhead Public Safety Task Force by any means. In fact, Council Member Norwood and I are working together in tandem to address some of the issues that we're facing today. However, I would be very much opposed to tabling this or to referring this particular piece of legislation given uh, the conversations that we've had in public safety, given that I had no opposition from any members of the public safety committee, nor the chair. I just simply ask that we provide equity uh, in terms of our citywide conversations and ensuring that all of the city of Atlanta residents uh, are given uh, the priority that I feel they deserve. And so for that reason, again, Mr. Chair, I ask for favorable consideration and immediate consideration that this be moved today. So we have the motion pending is the motion by Mr. Wan and seconded by Mr. Farouk to refer to the committee. Is there a discussion on the motion? Mr. President. Mr. Bond, you're recognized. Thank you very much. I think I, I might have a solution that might make the motion to refer unnecessary. I would like to humbly suggest that a whereas be added to the current legislation that would require the Public Safety Committee to take a 30-day period to review the uh, composition, current composition uh, of the uh, proposed amended committee to see if there are any additions that might need to be made. And what this will do is that while we're trying to get the appointments on, the Public Safety Committee can review uh, and make a recommendation as to whether or not any changes might necessarily might need to be made before they actually 
are seated and impaneled. Uh, that way, the, the work of getting the uh, commission stood up and operable can continue from this day forward. And then, uh, in a parallel course, the Public Safety Committee can do a review. And if there's some change that might need to be added or maybe some more members that might need to be uh, populated on the committee, then we can do so within 30 days without hampering the progress of this effort. Is that available to the to the movers and the and the author of the paper? Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, is appropriate time? I will I will recognize Councilmember Waits, but I will I will remind the body that amendments to the actual resolution are not in order at the moment since we have a re, uh, a motion to refer to committee. But I will allow Councilmember Waits to. Um, to take the floor and then council member one following. Thank you so much. I know that's your final thought. Uh, I just wanted to just. So I'm not really relating for I suppose it has a, a question. Uh, this was a I'll allow a council member way to say answer the question. Thank you. One, I want to thank you, uh, Council Member Bond, uh, and I certainly am very supportive of the suggestion. I just simply wanted to echo uh, that this particular paper was provided to the entire Public Safety uh, Committee uh, for that very purpose, and uh, the question went out uh, to provide any feedback, any suggestions, or any enhancements that you deem uh, that would be appropriate for this particular measure. So I just wanted to uh, clarify to the point of order that that was actually done, uh, I believe, Tuesday. Uh, this particular piece of legislation was provided to all members of the Public Safety uh, Committee as well as the chair. And I think Ms. Lindo can correct me if I am incorrect, but Mr. Bonner, I am very supportive uh, of your suggestion. And thank you. Okay, does uh, the mover of the motion have a comment on that or a response to the question? Mr. President, I'll, I'll, I'll allow Mr. Bond to respond. Uh, Mr. President, Mr. Bond, with all due respect, uh, my motion stands. I, I, this stop is making on the floor of council on something that's important is exactly the reason why it needs to go to committee for further discussion. Um, a 30 day reprieve while we stand it up, and, and I just don't think that that does our, our community a disservice. Well, we need to be thoughtful and do our work. All right, thank you for the answer to the question from both colleagues. <clears throat> before I read was before I asked that my name be added, was that done? No, it was not. When we return to the resolution, Mr. Bond, we will take that up. Okay, well, I will withdraw. Uh, Mr. Lewis, you are recognized. I just want to make a point of inference. I know that uh, Mr. Shook said grassroots. Uh, this is more grass tops than grassroots. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on the motion to refer the resolution to committee? Um, yes, Council President, uh, may I speak? Is that Council Member Bakhtiari? It is. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, so I, I know that I am a freshman colleague, but it would seem to me, one, I think that everyone here wants the exact same thing. Uh, I don't think we want a divided city. I think we're we're doing everything. I think many of us ran because we want to unite Atlanta. Um, I think while I support the work that Councilmember Waits and Norwood are doing to try to, to work in tandem on this issue, it seems that this could potentially set a dangerous precedent for trying to rush, as Councilmember Wan said, trying to rush something very complicated uh, in this way. And to speak to what Councilmember Norwood put forward with her Buckhead Task Force, it went through the appropriate channels, and I don't see this having any issue in committee, us discussing it, moving forward in committee, and and, and pushing it through as to speak to what Councilmember Wan said in a way that so that the public can see how the sausage is made. So in fear of potentially creating more divisiveness in this topic, is there a way, Councilor Waite, that you could see that this could potentially set a dangerous precedent and that we could move forward with just referring it to public safety to prevent any more divisiveness on the issue? Mr. President, do I have a full? 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to allow you to go ahead, Council Member Waits. Thank you so much, Council Member Batiari. Thank you so much uh, for your thoughts. Uh, I've echoed several times uh, during this conversation that this measure did uh, come up in the Public Safety Committee. I don't believe that there was any opposition. In fact, I was asked to uh, introduce the legislation when I brought it up because I asked that it be a companion piece and be included uh, so that we could combine those Buckhead Public Safety Task Force and, and create it into something that would be citywide. It was brought to my attention that there was actually legislation that was already codified into law. And so I just simply want to echo, uh, given the, because in my opinion, to not pass this today, frankly, is very divisive. And I think it sends the wrong message uh, to all of the city of Atlanta. But nonetheless, uh, I am interested in being a bridge builder, and I am happy to do whatever necessary uh, so that we can all coalesce around uh, what I believe is the right thing to do. So I'm happy to support any measure today to make that happen. I think given uh, the violent crime wave throughout our city, uh, in addition to some of the things that have happened over the course of the weekend, I would have thought that this was a measure that would have uh, certainly have passed with flying colors uh, and had a unanimous consent. So, frankly, I'm very disappointed, but nonetheless, I am happy to yield to the will of the body. A council member Overstreet. Um, so, I, I, I had a thought, and then um, I just heard from council member Waite, so it sounds like um, she's amenable to sending it to committee. Um, I will say that I have been contacted by several uh, people about Ms. Norwood's paper, and they were wondering why we didn't have a citywide um, uh, paper um, and why did we pull out just Buckhead. So I thought that the companion piece was a good idea, um, and I know that one will go before the other if we didn't go immediate today. So I, um, but listen, I am always on the side of uh, committee work um, and public engagement, and um, so for that reason, I am really um, on the fence. So. I, because I do know that, I, you know, during public safety, we did talk about this paper. Um, I know that that's how the paper was born, and I didn't know that it would be not considered an immediate um, paper because I thought those the two papers went together. So um, I don't know. I, this, you know, I I believe in in committee work as well. So I'm going to. Um, the my decision, and I'll um, I just I'll yield the floor back. Thanks. Thank you, Councilmember Overstreet. Councilmember Lewis. I want to second uh, Councilmember Overstreet, but I want to also offer this right here. If we pass the but Buckhead bill today, in which uh, Liliana actually voted yes on, if we pass that bill today. How is it that we, we, I think we're telling the rest of the city, like District 12, District 11, District 10, you don't matter. Because we're going to wait to pass yours in 30 days. Yeah. Well, we're still considering the motion by Mr. Wan to refer the resolution to committee. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Mr. President, Councilman Westmoreland, I can go after Ms. Norwood. Uh, all right, Councilmember uh, Norwood first, and then Councilmember Westmore. Councilmember Norwood. I just wanted to say, you know, from my previous years of being on council and seeing commissions, um, one of the things that does happen is that if there is someone who was not put on the commission, but you decide is important, then they become one of your principal presenters, and that becomes a way that their information is folded into the work of the commission. So that's something that does not have to be done in the legislation. That is something that comes out of the work of the commission. Just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Council Member Westmoreland. No, I, I just wanted to make an observation that Councilman Shepard 
introduced this legislation last summer, if I'm not mistaken, and the, this particular body has been in existence for the last four or five months. Um, and I appreciate what Councilman Grover Street and others have said about our practice um, of having this type of lengthy discussion in committee. Um, and whichever way it goes today, this would undoubtedly be back before us on February 7th, which would allow us to make changes to a body that's been in existence for the last five or six months. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Wan. Thank you. So as I'm listening to this, I mean, you know, one of the thoughts, two thoughts, number one is that while it may have been discussed in public safety, there are 18 of us who are not on, uh, no, I'm sorry, eight of us that are not on that committee um, who have a vested interest in the success of this and the, a strategy around that. Um, as, as everyone knows, you may not sit in on a committee, but you can certainly parachute and participate in that, that meeting's proceedings to voice your opinion. If the paper doesn't move through committee, we don't get a chance. I don't sit on public safety. I didn't. I wouldn't have gotten a chance to go in there and talk about this. So that's why I think it's important for we have full deliberation of this by council, um, with that opportunity being in public safety committee. Second piece of it is is that I agree with something that Mr. Shook said uh, not, uh, about um, policing strategies should be very hyper local. And and I I was in here talking with somebody about. Maybe the strategy isn't to do a citywide. Maybe it's to create regional ones. You have one for Buckhead. You might have one for Southwest Atlanta. You might have one for East Atlanta because crime impacts in somewhat different ways uh, that way. And that way you can engage um, really hyper local grassroots security efforts like street captains and those that not necessarily APAB representatives, the MC chairs, but the, the public safety chairs of, of those organizations. This is the kind of conversation I'd like to have. I, I mean, if this moves the committee, I will go into the committee and talk about this. Um, but just to move this through, I, I, I'm just trying to show y'all where I think there's room for improvement and, and room for more exploration. If there's already something on the books from last year, stand that up first. Go ahead and stand that up and, and then let council do our work and trying to figure out while that's on it, there might be another a better path um, versus this. Again, you raise your hand, say I want my neighbor on the commission, they get on it while we're on the floor of council. I, there, there is a reason why um, we have our deliberative process. And I, I feel like, you know, as I said before, that's why I feel like the motion to refer is appropriate because we need to explore all this um, before creating an entity that could, you know, fall by the wayside like it did last year versus if we had taken time to maybe set up more localized ones, that might be, might be more effective. We don't afford ourselves that opportunity for that deliberation. So again, um, my motion still holds. Is there further discussion on the motion? Hearing no further discussion, we will move to a vote on the motion to refer this to committee. Mr. Clerk, would you please open the vote? The vote is open. Will everyone please vote? <laughs> Reflecting the vote. Councilman Bond, how would you like to have your vote reflected? Nay. Councilman Westmoreland? In favor. Councilman Lewis? No. Councilperson Bakhtarari? In favor. Populating votes. The vote is now closed. Eight yeas, seven nays. Eight yeas, seven nays. The motion to refer is adopted. Elms 28774 
when we move the public safety committee. Mr. Clerk, am I correct that there are no other items for immediate consideration? That is correct. Thank you. So we'll now move to uh, personal papers and items to be referred. Um, I will um, call out various council members who I know have papers and then we'll call for any others. Uh, Mr. Amos, I believe that you have items. Yes, sir, I um, have two. Um, ordinance by council member Byron Amos, an ordinance to amend the city of Atlanta code of ordinances, part two ordinances, chapter 106, offenses and miscellaneous provisions, article five, um, offenses by and against minors, section 106-227, curfew dash authorized to add additional exceptions for homeless youth and teenagers and for other purposes. Mr. and Mrs. Elms, uh, ID number 28794. It will be co uh, referred to the Public Safety Committee. Uh, please proceed. Thank you. Um, the next is AMS ID 28782, an ordinance by Council Member Byron Amos, an ordinance authorizing the mayor on behalf of the city of Atlanta to enter into a housing assistance payment contract with Southside Medical Center, Legacy House, in an amount not to exceed $197,328 for the purpose of providing housing and or services to individuals and families with HIV AIDS through the Housing Opportunities for People with AIDS program sponsored by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development to ratify HOSPA housing and service rendered by Southside Medical Center Legacy House between January, July 1st, 2021, and the execution date of the agreement authorized herein to be charged to and paid from account listed below and for other purposes. Thank you, Elms ID number 28782 will be referred to the Community Development Human Services Committee. Any other items, Mr. Raymond? No, that's it, thank you, sir. Thank you. Council Member Boone, I believe you have a number of items. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. First item, Elms number 29786. Elms number 29786, an ordinance by Council Member Andrea Boone, an ordinance authorizing the amendment of contract agreement for subrecipient Gateway Center, Zayban Quest Community Development, Your Empowerment Success Services, Our House Inc., Atlanta Harm Reduction Coalition and Covenant House Georgia to provide emergency support to vulnerable populations during the COVID-19 pandemic using emergency solutions, grant ESG funds, and for other purposes. Just for clarification, I believe that's Elms 28786, is that correct? 29786. 29786. That will be referred to the uh, Community Development and Human Services Committee. Please proceed. Elms number 28793. Elms number 28793. An ordinance by Council Member Andrea Booth. An ordinance authorizing the transfer of $30,000 and zero cents from the Council District 10 carry forward account to the Council District 10 expense account and for other purposes. Elms 28793 will be referred to the Finance Exec Committee. Please proceed. Elms number 28775. Elms number 28775. An ordinance by Council Member Andrea Boone, an ordinance to amend the land use element of the 2021 Atlanta Comprehensive Development Plan CDP so as to redesignate property located at 257 Oak Cliff Road, Northwest from the single family residential SFR land use designation to the low density residential LDR land use designation and for other purposes, Z-21-082 MPUH Council District 10. Elms ID 28775 will be referred to the Community Development Human Services Committee. Please proceed. 
last item, Elm number 28776, 28776, an ordinance by Councilmember Andrea Boone, an ordinance to amend the land use element of the 2021 Atlanta Comprehensive Development Plan, CDP, so as to redesignate property located at 1411 South Gordon Street Southwest from the single family residential SFR land use designation to the low density commercial LDC land use designation and for other purposes. Z-21-093 NPUT Council District 10. Elms ID 28776 will be referred to Community Development Human Services Committee. Council Member Thank you. Um, just wanted, Council Member Boone, I just want to double check on the um, amending the ESGCB contracts and the correct number on that, Elms number on that one. 29876. Elms number 29. No, 29786. 29786. Um, I believe it may be, there may be a typo there. I, may, I believe it may be 28786. Okay, maybe we can get clarity from Mr. Pace. But I think it's 7786. Sure, Mr. Pace, can you clarify? Mr. President, that item number is 28786. Uh, it was a typo in the Elms number. All right, so Council Member Boone, the, uh, amending the SGCB contracts, Elms 28786, will be referred to the Community Development and Human Services Committee. Thank you. Any other items? Okay, Councilmember Bond. Thank you, Mr. President. That Elms number 28785, an ordinance by Councilmember Michael Julian Bond, an ordinance to authorize the mayor on behalf of the city of Atlanta to enter into a housing assistance payments contract with Southside Medical Center. Legacy Village in amount to not exceed $187,140.00 for the purpose of providing housing and or services to individuals and families with HIV AIDS through the Housing Opportunities for Persons with AIDS program sponsored by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Elms 28786. Legacy Village between July 1st, 2021, and the execution date of the agreement authorized herein to be charged to and paid from the account numbers listed below and for other purposes. Thank you. Elms ID 28785 will be referred to the Community Development Human Services Committee. Any other items, Mr. Bond? No, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Dozier, I believe you have an item. Yes, I do, Mr. President. Uh, this is Elms number 28787, uh, an ordinance by Council Member Jason Dozier amending the FY 2019 Emergency Solutions Grant Agreement with Gateway Center in the amount of $194,000 and transferring to Gateway Center from appropriations in an amount not to exceed $194,000 for the purpose of reprogramming emergency solutions grant funding and to extend the contractual agreement with Gateway Center to ratify prior services and for other purposes. Elms ID 28787 will be referred to the Community Development Human Services Committee. Any other items, Mr. Dozier? That's it for me. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Faroki, I believe that you have an item. I do, it's Elms number 28780. 
an ordinance by Council Member Amir Faroqui authorizing the mayor or his, or his designee to install a four way stop at the intersection of Alaska Avenue Northeast and Highland Avenue Northeast to authorize the Atlanta DOT install stop signs at the intersection and for other purposes. LMZIB 28780 will be referred to the Transportation Committee. Uh, any other items? No, that's it. Thank you, Mr. Faroqui, for uh, providing the highlight to today's <laughs> meeting. The most mature one among us all, right? <laughs> <laughs> Council Member Hillis, I believe you have an item. Yes, President, thank you. This is Elm by the 28789. An ordinance by Council Member Dustin Hillis authorizing the mayor his designee to make the two intersections of Park View Lane Northwest and Park View Run Northwest in the Bolton neighborhood always stop controlled intersections to authorize the Atlanta Department of Transportation to install stop signs at the intersections and for other purposes and just wanted to note uh, for the staff of the subscribers there in the first whereas clause uh, where it states whereas this intersection so it read whereas these intersections thank you Elms ID 28789 will be referred to the transportation committee any other items Mr. Hillis that is it thank you very much Thank you. Council Member Overstreet, I believe that you have a few items. I do. Thank you, President. Um, a resolution by Council Members Marcy Collier Overstreet, Andrea Boone, Michael Julian Bond, Antonio Lewis, Byron Amos, Matt Westmoreland, Jason Winston, and Dustin Hillis. A resolution requesting MARTA Board of Directors provide a report to ensure the funding allocated for the expansion of Campbellton Road Corridor Project and Greenbrier Transit Hub that was ratified on October 4, 2018 by the MARTA Board of Directors for the More MARTA Atlanta Pro Program are accounted for and being used specifically for their designated allocations and for other purposes. This is M's number uh, 28784. Elms ID 28784 will be referred to the Transportation Committee. Please proceed. Okay. Uh, this one is M 28783. And this is an ordinance by Council Member Marcy Collier Overstreet, an ordinance authorizing the Chief Financial Officer to amend the fiscal year 2022 by, by transferring funds from the general fund non-departmental account to the Jazz Festival non-capital trust fund account in the amount of $400,000 and zero cents to support the 2022 Atlanta Jazz Festival and authorizing all Jazz Festival contracted work shall be paid from the account listed herein and for other purposes. Elms ID 28783 will be referred to the Finance Exec Committee. Please proceed. Okay. Thank you. This is uh, last paper, Elms number 28779. It's a resolution by Council Member Marcy Collier Overstreet, a resolution requesting the Commissioner of Atlanta Department of Transportation and the Commissioner of the Department of Parks and Recreation to create a pedestrian safety plan for Danforth Road to enhance street safety for the West Cascade Park and for other purposes. Elms 28779 will be referred to the Transportation Committee. Any other items? No, that's it. Thank you. Right, thank you. Council Member Juan, I believe you have uh, items. Thank you, Mr. President. I have three. <clears throat> the first one is Elms number 28795. Resolution by Council Member Alex Juan authorizing a Chief Financial Officer to refund customers for overpayments to water and sewer accounts in an amount of blank. All funds should be charged to and paid from fund department organization and accountant is listed and for other purposes. Elms ID 28795 will be referred to the Finance Exec Committee. Um, my Please. second one is Elms number 28777, an ordinance by Council Member Alex Wan correcting 20 0 1335 by correcting and decreasing the intergovernmental fund budget by transferring from anticipation and appropriations in the amount of $118,345.66 for the purpose of correcting and decreasing the HOPLA CV administration allocation to the allocated amount, uh, to the allowed amount and for other purposes. 
Um, ID 28777 will be referred to the Community Development Human Services Committee. Thank you, Mr. President. My final one is ELMS ID number 28778, an ordinance by Council Member Alex Wan to ratify Mayor Andre Dickens' executive order directing a Chief Financial Officer and the Commissioner of the Department of Human Resources to extend implementation of the City of Atlanta's Employee Vaccination Incentive Program, whereby city employees receiving their initial COVID-19 vaccinations between September 15, 2021, and December 31st, 2021, and city employees receiving a COVID-19 vaccine booster between October 18, 2021, and December 31st, 2021, were eligible to receive a one-time $100 incentive payment such that the implementation of the City of Atlanta's Employee Vaccination Incentive Program shall continue through June 30th, 2022, and for other purposes. Um, the ID 28778 will be referred to the Finance Exec Committee. Anything Thank else? You, Mr. President, that concludes my personal papers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Westmoreland. Thank you, Mr. President. I have one item, um, which is Elms number 28788. Ignorance by Council Member Matt Westmoreland extending the FY 2019 Emergency Solutions Grant Agreements with Covenant House, Georgia, Lakewood, FSC, Hosea, Fee the Hungry. Travels Aid of Metro Atlanta, Homeless Prevention, Travels Aid of Metro Atlanta, Rapid Rehousing, Travels Aid of Metro Atlanta Outreach, Nicholas House, Salvation Army, Making a Way, and to extend the contractual agreement with the Gateway Center to ratify prior services and for other purposes. LMS ID 28788 will be referred to Community Development Human Services Committee. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Winston. Yes, Mr. President, I have one, um, Elm 28781, a resolution by Council Member Jason Winston, the resolution authorizing the mayor or his designee on behalf of the city of Atlanta to amend the housing assistance payments contract for Washington Street Apartments to enter into a housing assistance payment contract with 949-943-953 Washington Street LLC effective November 15, 2021 through March 31st, 2022 for an amount not to exceed $151,680 and no cents for the purpose of paying rental subsidies for 16 units for low income families at Washington Street Apartments pursuant to the Section 8 Moderate Rehabilitation Program sponsored by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development to be charged to and paid from accounts listed below and for other purposes. Thank you. Elm's ID 28781 will be referred to the Community Development Human Services Committee. Are there any other papers? Thank you very much. Uh, before I entertain a motion to move into uh, an executive session, I'd like to ask the city attorney or someone from the law department to explain uh, the need for an executive session today. Someone's on the line. Council President Shipman, do you hear me? Yes, we hear you now. Please proceed. Yes, this is Nina Hickson, City Attorney. The reason for the executive session is to discuss pending litigation. Thank you. I would entertain a motion to move into executive session. Overstreet. Moved. West, second, West Mall. Moved by Council Member Overstreet, seconded by Council Member Westmoreland. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing no discussion, uh, we'll move to a vote. Mr. Clerk, would you open the vote on the motion to move into executive session? The vote is open. Will everyone please vote? Reflecting vote. Councilman Bond, how would you like to have your vote reflected? Aye. Councilman Wan? Aye, please. Councilman Shook? Aye. Councilwoman Boone? Yes. 
Councilman Lewis? Uh, yes. Populating votes. The vote is now closed. 15 yeas, zero nays. 15 yeas, zero nays. Uh, the motion is adopted. We'll move into executive session. I would ask that uh, only council members and um, law department be on the executive session. Uh, and there is a separate conference call. So we will log out, go into executive session, and then we'll return from executive session to proceed with the regular meeting. Thank you.
This is Council President Shipman. Just waiting for the council members to rejoin. Mr. Clark, do we have an indication that we have uh, council members back on this line? We do have an indication that they're joining the meeting, but I'm not certain of the number at this point. Right. Council member back, sorry, is present. No wedge. Council Member Boone, just wanting to commend our communication staff 
on a very well put together pro, um, presentation for the ML King holiday. There was some really, really good work done, and I just want to commend Mr. Zena Lewis, Phyllis Jackson, and their entire team. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Council Member Byrne. Any other remarks? Hearing none, Mr. Clerk, I would uh, ask you, even though we just did, just to uh, to be clear to to uh, call in German roll call. Today's meeting was held in accordance with OCGA 50-14-1 regarding open meetings. The time is now 5:01. Council President Doug Shipman, adjourning roll call. Present. Council members Michael Julian Bond. Here. Matt Westmoreland. Here. Keisha Sean Waite. Present. Jason H. Winston. Here. Amir Faroki. Here. Byron D. Amos. Here. Jason Dozier. Here. Liliana Bakadi. Here. Alex Wan. Here. Howard Shook. Aye. Mary Norwood. Here. Dustin Hillis. Aye. Andrea Boone. Present. Marcy Callie Overstreet. Present. Antonio Lewis. Present. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Clark. At this point, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by Mr. Bond. Is there a second? Second, Dr. Chiari. Good. Moved and seconded to adjourn. Uh, we'll adjourn by unanimous consent without any objections. Are there any objections to adjourning? Mr. Clerk, can you call the, the count for adjournment? 15 yeas, 0 nays. 15 yeas, 0 nays. Thank you all. We stand adjourned. Have a good evening. <laughs>